three guys looking for a new thrill. The podcast game had become overrun with no goods, batio clones, future glue sticks, and anti popes. One group had had enough. The Patreon is set. The Bozo Pewter is relit. And the Jones Brothers bullshit is unleashed. Who are you? Abe Moose Papa. Pot of Thunder <laughs> Season 3, The Crackdown. Starring America's little brother, Andy Jones. With Nick Nick Polak, Nick Jones. And the gunslinger himself, Chris L. They've wiped the decks clean. And now you can have it. Rate it off a rock. Rate it off a roll. Rate it B for boner. <laughs> when the clock strikes half past eight, babe, time to head for Chris's house. Will the sun make it to the next round? Boner. Pot of thunder. Tonight, come on, baby, let's pot tonight. Ooh. Yes. Oh yeah. Welcome to Pot of Thunder, the recognized symbol of excellence in rock and roll podcasting. Brought to you by Blue Microphones. They look great. They sound even better. And you know who I am. Wait a minute. What? The tribute to Andy. What? Continues. It continues. Okay. What? I spell sex and hand here. <laughs> Who's that breaking my office chair? <laughs> Who's that casting the surgeons on I eighty for my breakfast? Mama, this journey is what? green. Yeah. What happened there? <laughs> I had to crab a lot of syllables into that passage. I, I, I lost my wind. Cl- classic beginner's mistake for a vocalist. <laughs> what happened in there? What did you say? Something about breakfast? Casting excursions on I ate you for my breakfast. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Well, thank you, Nick and Chris, for the tribute to me. For uh, what is it for? For five hundred and one episodes, because I've been here for every episode. And he's the only one who he has to. He's, he's the only 500. one who knows how to work. Wow, everything. that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, so I get special extra songs every week. So you know me. It's your buddy Andy, America's little brother, over there. He's gonna dance. Gonna. You, you have to. There's video now. Uh, Polka dancing his way across the podcast studio. I'm gonna. Nick Nick Polak is straightening his sock, but not <laughs> dancing. That's still visual. I to guess. Some degree, right? Nick's playing with his feet. Next, I, I'm working on something for next week. Oh, okay. All right. I believe I'm you. Hoping, visual? I'm hoping I can do it, yeah. Don't hurt yourself. You're I, hoping I'm, you can do it? I probably will hurt myself. Is it, This is something you're training or... You're working no, this out? I'm, I'm inept, and I'm trying to be less inept okay. physically. Okay, well, I, all right. I'm okay with that. I just want you to hurt yourself here, or break a coffee table, well, knock over a lamp. I might, There's I a might, lot of cords and things around. I might go guitar uh, equipment. Chris Farley on this coffee table. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Could be bad. Here's you, here's me, there's me, here's... <laughs> Directly to Nick's left. You on him. We got him. I think we need a gunslinger. This is not my theme song. It's not? Cut this off. We got a new dawn going on. You have a new song? Yes. It's in the fucking library, dickhead. I don't know what it is. It's so fucking I can have it. Well, I, no one told me that that's a new song. They just yeah, said, here's a new that, clip. That, that shit is in the past. This, this is a new dawn here. New Come on three. now. I get clips sent to me with no context, no explanation. You find the clip with the title. It. I have it. I just right. didn't know it was your song. It, that is the new theme song. <laughs> See what rolling. happens when money starts to creep into Jeez. the equation. Jeez. See? Ten years. See? Breakdown started in one day. Directly to Nick's left. You want him. We got him. I can have it every day. Yeah, yeah. I can have it. Get out of my way. Yeah. 
Put That's your hands right. together for the breakout star of the podcast medium. That is Chris L. That's right. We're here. The anthem of entitlement the world needs right now. I can <laughs> have it. Chris L on lead vocals sounds better than Ace Fraley. <laughs> Yeah, kinda. I'm getting there. I'm working out those <clears throat> classic beginners' mistakes, you know. But uh, yeah, I'm reinventing myself as a vocalist uh, late in life. <laughs> Who would have seen that coming? Plus, your lung capacity was pretty astounding in that first clip. Well, I I nearly passed out when I recorded <laughs> that. I I, well, I underestimated how many syllables I was trying to cram into that one line. <laughs> well, and you heard a fourth voice. He's back. For the probably 30th time, thank goodness he's back for season three, episode one. Chris Jericho's here. Jericho! Oh! His voice is music to our ears. Jericho! It's exciting. I even got a new theme song, too. Thanks. It's great. Obviously, based on the great Cherokee by Europe. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for coming back. It's been a little while. Everybody's excited. It has been a little while. And uh, um, I have actually been announced before as Chris Cherico. C-H. So it's very close to Cherokee. (laughs) If you really. Yeah, Cherico. Cherico. The best one was when I uh, first started. I went to... uh, um, a flea market in in California, Pomona, California. It was a Mexican flea market, and I was announced as Chris Hadachico. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> Has a ring to it. That isn't That's bad. What Paul, Paul Heyman calls me that to this day. Does he Hadachico? <laughs> was he there, or he just heard about it? No, I, he loves the story. He just loves yeah. the story. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Well. <laughs> We're happy to have you. Um, we've got a new listener submission list, and it's going to be Chris L's turn to pick from it. We have new rules. Part of season three, the crackdown, is that you have <laughs> I love to be. How the, the show's been on for ten years, and we're only at season three. <laughs> yeah. These have been long fucking seasons. Now. Yeah, they're very long. The first one was 290 episodes. <laughs> well, you know, in, in in this age of streaming, we're not we're not confined to a calendar like old right. network TV. We do whatever we right. want. Yeah, so 290, yeah. 210, and here we are, episode three. Yeah. F- episode 501. The tightest episode of all. <laughs> the button fly episode. Yeah. <laughs> you know the real tight ones? <laughs> <laughs> so the new oh. rules... Um, you know, as if you just if you listen to the episode, <laughs> it's the same, blip, right? Blip. What are you doing over there? Isn't, doing that, over isn't there. that what Paul did during the? During oh, his, he's uh, undoing the buttons. Blip. And then the top button. Yeah. Next yeah. one. Next yeah, one. Exactly. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> About thirty buttons on. Now, his how many pants? buttons are on his pants? <laughs> they they go all the way down to the ankles, apparently. <laughs> They're like those tearaway pants. It's on the side. All they, the way they down. They go wrap around to his taint. <laughs> Why not? Like a scorpion stinger. <laughs> so the new rule, if you just listen to the show through whatever podcast provider, nothing changes. But if you are listening, uh, well, I should say this. If you want to add a song to the listener submission list, you have to be a member of our Patreon group, patreon.com slash pot of thunder. So we've got a new listener submission list. Everything is different. It's crazy. They're trying to tell us something. They have figured out the formula for chaos. It took us 500 episodes, but we figured out the formula for chaos. We're here. Yes. That's Chris's favorite. We're still at it. Chris can't get enough of that clip, so it's going to happen yeah, every episode. The, the, the ramblings of a smackhead. Who, 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 what's not to love about that? Yeah. So we're going to be going to the list, the new list for the first time ever, and... Chris L. will be choosing from these however many songs we have so far. We so still got see. random generation capabilities, right? Absolutely, we yeah. do. I haven't looked at the list. I'm not going to look on the list. I think you're going to like me it. Some th- feed me some random choices, and I'll come up with something that uh, I think will make for a good discussion. All right, well, if you guys are ready, Nick, pull it. Stand by. You gotta Let's pull it. Let's go over to the Bozo Pewter. Pop 
tap the buttons and the poet goes up here. Alright, it's coming to you. Oh my gosh. Uh oh. <laughs> Nothing's wrong with the song. It's just the uh, autocorrect. So when you see the first word, add a T to it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Never mind. So we don't know what the uh, what the options are. This is up for Chris to decide. Yeah, yeah it's up for Chris it's, to decide. It's between it's, Andy and Chris. Yeah, he's looking. He's thinking. You, know, you you guys at home listening know what the song is because it's in the title. But we yep. honestly have no idea Mm-mm. what the song is. Although I will right say now. this: the, the people watching the exclusive pre feed don't know what it is because we're not putting it in the title for them. So yeah, but another interesting twist, but. But the majority of the listeners, yes. the vast majority, no, we do not. Okay. We're, this is legit. Chris is looking. He's debating. Yeah, I like this one. Yeah? You're good with it? I'm good with it. Um, I think everyone uh, will be happy with let this. Me just, let me just confirm the album. I'm pretty sure I know what it is, mm. but let me just look that up real quick. <laughs> so you know, f- first, first draw, huh? Let me tell you something interesting about this on our list. This song is on here three times on the new list, which is a day and a half old or about two days old now there's 201 songs submitted so far we blew away the 5100 list from from season two it's gone (laughs) but Uh. but of 201 songs this is on here three times from three different people who are in the patreon group so they want it people have spoken and this is only in two days right yes two days three people have wanted this song so that, that tells me that we should probably do it yep you know what, though? I just thought of something. It's, it's, this might warrant a video watch along because there's, a, there's a, the bits at the beginning and the end that I think are worth commenting on. Really? I'm always up for a video. Can you get it to, so Jericho can see it if you run a video for Yeah. Yeah. Streamyard, of course you can. We've done it before. Okay. I've, I've actually rigged up a, a, a big old cable that... Uh, the end of end of it is right over by you i just gotta turn the tv back on but well if you want you could full size that and i'll play it on there then we don't have to do that okay yeah that's fine yeah Yeah. okay well are you ready for me to uh to hit it here and you could tell us what it is i am ready for all right yeah well let's turn it for the real kiss (laughs) all right (laughs) let's turn the microphone over to a pre-recorded version of chris jericho all right harold this one's called Lay It Down. Oh yes. Uh, wow. Invasion of your privacy. By the band. Rat. Ow. Nice. Oh. That lung capacity again. Well, no, you you started running your mouth over there. You distracted me. You started making noises. You said lay it down, and I was like, ugh. Exactly. <laughs> just what do you expect me. when someone says lay it down is the song? I don't know. I didn't know what to expect. It, t- it took yeah. me aback, and I uh, I missed my cue on the second <laughs> one. That's fair. Uh, now, this is a, I, I won't go too far into my opinion of this song, mm-hmm. but it's my favorite rat song. Favorite rat it's, song? It's got to wow. be, be up there for most people, I would think. Are, are you familiar offhand with the video, though? Have you seen it? Uh, only vaguely. I, I can't pinpoint it mentally right now. Okay, the, the intro is definitely kind of weird. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, 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 as soon as I remembered what the video was, it, it, we had to do it. So, I think I remember the intro, but I'll wait. I'll wait to comment. And if it's the one I'm thinking, it is a little odd. Now, what do I need to do here? Full size this thing? Yeah, you could just hit the... You know, that little thing in the bottom corner that will blow it up and then you'll see it. Pretty good clip there. Bottom can't you can't you can't you full size it somewhere? If you mouse over the screen there and you get that little uh, hash mark box in the corner. So Chris J, what are your thoughts on Lay It Down? Um, so it's funny because I think the uh out of the cellar record is obviously better than invasion of your privacy. Um by a little bit, but I think lay it down might be the best rat song out of all of them. Um, there's a couple others that I like just as much, but I think the groove of, of this song and the riff of this song is gotta be top three for the band for sure. So oh, I'm no a big, big fan. Big yeah. fan. 
All right. So who who submitted this one? Let me tell you. I love it that three people submitted this. Yeah, in two days. Yeah. So two people days. people want it. Then they can have it. Today. That's right. Part of uh, season three is the theme. The theme of entitlement. That's what <laughs> we're all about it. this year. All right. So David McCowan. Oh, well. We just talked to him a few minutes ago. He says, I love the 80s stuff and Warren Demartini, in my opinion, doesn't get his due. Great soloist and a band really worth discussing. Not making an episode about Rat. Are you insane? <laughs> well, we did have the one before of the uh, song from what, the Point Break soundtrack? Yeah, that's right. Did. Nobody rides for free. That's so what it was. We, so yeah. we have done a rat episode, but nothing <clears throat> this iconic, obviously. Okay. And then let's see, who's the next uh, submitter here? Ooh, Jackie Hardigan. Jack, wow, interesting. Just talked just talk to her. We just talked to her. We did a, a little uh, Patreon pre show stream. So we just had a little Zoom meeting with all these people. Jackie says, video watch along recommended, Man. although the song stands on its own, no question. Indeed. A lot to unpack with the video between the birthday party, pirate attire, <laughs> and I feel like there's a stretch where Mr. Crochet is trying to get in every shot. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, there's one thing about, uh, and I, we've never done a rat song before, which is great, uh, like of the four of us. But Juan Cruce, I believe Chris has gone off on a, on a tangent about him before, just his ridiculously over-exaggerated stage moves that are just completely unnecessary. Well, I'm not the only one. I mean, his bandmates did in the behind the music. I mean, there's there's a good five minutes devoted to how ridiculous. Really? It. Oh, they're mad about that. Oh, the, the, the rat behind the music is one of the best behind the music episodes. They they, they really, uh, you know, they they really they don't take any damn poor cruce. No, they don't. No, they don't pull any punches in that one. So. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, and then the third and final submitter of this song. Let me get a deep breath here. Dan Papathopoulos. All right. Uh, That's not a real name. He it, made that up. He may have made it up. Wasn't that an Adam Sandler song? <laughs> or maybe that's where Belky was from. I'm trying to figure out what the joke is here. All right. Dan says, to me, this song just defines rat and roll. Is so, that wrong about that? Yeah. Yeah, great tune. What year was this? 85. 85. 85. year I graduated high school. Good was, time. Was this in your rotation? Um, You know what? I, and I've talked about this a lot. Um, so in the mid-80s, I was sort of rediscovering a lot of uh, classic rock. So I was 70s, getting back, back into the Zeppelin and the Stones and um, stuff like that. But when I got to college... In 85, all the guys on my floor were fucking into hair metal. So they were constantly blasting Rat, Crew, Bon Jovi, go down the list. Fat so, Boys? Uh, there was, that was the next year. Okay, the, you told me about sophomore the Sophomore year, the guy with the Fat Boys painter's hat. <laughs> uh, his name was name was Mark Buckaloo, by the way. Oh, I man. remember it. Buckaloo? Yeah. Mark Boogaloo. Mark, we need to get Mark on the show. Yeah, that, yeah. that guy would have instantly been my friend. Oh, he was. The guy, the yeah. guy with the Fat Boy painter's hat. <laughs> Electric Buckaloo, I believe they But call fresh, <laughs> freshman year, 1985, th these were the days of the huge component stereo systems, the speed that were as tall as you were mm -hmm. and everybody had one and it was just the volume wars constantly with people uh cranking music and this right. rat was definitely in high rotation throughout the floor so amongst several people on the floor you were living in the walk this way video shoot essentially pretty much people yeah. wanting to bust through the walls to to get their music heard by the other of, side kind of that way and we were we were the only uh goy floor in an otherwise all jewish dorm which was also it definitely had a fish out of water vibe going on in there <laughs> It was very, very strange dynamic that was happening in there, and we were our floor was right in the middle of the second floor, and we were surrounded by Jewish kids and uh, classic Gavilta fish out of water story. Exactly right. <laughs> 
And I think we figured out early on the, the way to keep them at bay was to just crank hair metal constantly. And Rat was definitely in uh, high rotation for that. Band. There's not a lot of Jewish hair metal bands, is there? Well, I mean, Kiss in the '80s. You know? Well, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, they got two, two Jews running that uh, running that camp. That's a good call. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, no, uh, uh, I think if you got one in Anthrax. Yeah, yeah. I think there's probably more than you would think, but um, they did. It, it was just uh, it was mayhem on our floor, and it was just constant loud hair metal music. So. I never really had to buy any of those albums. I just went to the room next door or down the hall and got my fill of it, and I was good with it. Hmm. How about David Rashbaum? That sounds like a Jewish name. Of Bon Jovi? Yeah. Before oh, he's he changed the keyboard name player? David Bryan. Yeah, okay. he was originally, he was originally yeah. David Rashbaum. That does sound like it. Two, yeah. re- two records in, realized it wasn't much of a rock star name. <laughs> David Bryan. What yeah. do you think? I would have stuck Aaron. with Rashbaum. It's much more memorable. He should have just gone with that. Drop the David. Just Rashbaum. <laughs> yeah, why not? That would so, be awesome. Sounds like a composer. That would, yeah. Yeah, and I think by the, I think by the mid '80s, the last name Keel was taken, so he, he couldn't really do that. Should have opted for another uh, piece of a ship to n- name himself after. Is Keel's real name not Keel? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it is Ron Keel. It's his name. So you, I can't you wait still till criticize him for that, even though it's his birth name. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> All right, that's fair. And Fix Ron, it. I can't wait till a Keel song comes up. Yeah, I can't believe it hasn't Cannot happened. Cannot wait. Wow. Yeah, now now that we've talked about one. it, oh, there's there. good ones. There's right one in rock. particular that I I I'm hoping someone puts on the list and I get to pick it. Do you say that because? You like it, or do you think I like it? It would set Chris off. I like it. It would set Chris off. <laughs> All of the above. All of the above. Okay. Would it be their cover of "Because the Night"? Wow. No, no but that's, they, did that. they didn't really do that. Yeah, did they? that was that was like well, back in now, the eighties. That's right? just the idea of it set Chris off. <laughs> it <did>. no, I, <laughs> well, that was before Ten Thousand Maniacs, right? Yeah, that was long before they did it. Well, you know, yep. well, Ron Keel was in the ear of Ten Thousand yeah. Maniacs. Everyone knew that. <laughs> in fact, they, 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 he was they, the puppet master. In behind. fact, they were they were a package concert. <laughs> you know, the bands went t- together so well that uh, it was like Def Leppard and Poison. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Jimi Hendrix and the Monkees, that type of uh, pairing. <laughs> Keel and Ten Thousand Maniacs. All right. Well, Van, Van Halen and Cool and the Gang, who I saw play. Yeah. Kiss and Painters. <laughs> oh. That's something that we were talking earlier for those of you at home about the Kiss um, Howard Stern interview, which was excellent. And they talked about five minutes about this, the amazing list of opening bands that they had. Mm-hmm. And it just made me sad that like, they're so proud of it and talking about all these great bands that opened for them. Yeah. And I'm thinking, how can you talk this bullshit when you got a fucking painter opening for you? Stop. You got one more tour. Put somebody on the bill. Is it the painter still? Or do we not yeah. know for sure? Yeah, yeah. Maybe we don't know. We don't know. Okay. But mm-hmm. if, if, they, if they were going out with somebody, they would say, I mean, put yeah. Dirty Honey, put Fozzie on, put fucking Greta Van Fleet, put anybody on to end off on a high note they we got rush and we had triumph and we had billy squire and we had this guy and that guy and the cheap trick and these great bands it's like fuck you just are sticking your own foot right up your own ass right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> wouldn't be the first time you that's know what that rant, is yeah. you know what that is jericho that's that's just a what? classic beginner's mistake <laughs> of uh touring you love bands that. <laughs> you love that you love i do that. love that, that is a great it's, it's right up to, it's right it's a close second to the artwork extortion story nothing nothing well here's that. here's something great paul stanley actually texted me the other day to ask me a question i hey. think this happened maybe twice in the 10 years that i've known him you mentioned that <laughs> that's nice though that's probably exciting it nice. yeah that's cool yeah. um Paul, paul's my paul's my buddy we're cool yeah um we just got a message uh it says, uh, not taking us on tour. Let's see what it is. Are you insane? <laughs> and then, who are they taking? They're taking a painter? 
Just wad crochet chime again. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely maniacal. Well, that's your yeah. 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 yeah, that's him from the behind the music <laughs> episode. Look, Why you, do you have a speed dial? Why not? Can you play can you play the laughter again? The laughter again? I love the laughter. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> have you, How many, Tuj, have you not seen the rat behind the music episode? Yeah, I, I did see it, but I don't, I don't remember. I mean, that was like 10 years ago. I, I don't remember that one in particular. Uh, oh, it's classic. It's a Robin Crosby story, obviously, which is a shame. Yeah, yeah. but but the rest of it is just, it's it's right, uh, right up there with the Motley Crue episode to me. Now, speaking of Robin That's Crosby, pretty I'm pretty sure this opening riff was his, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh. I, I Really? Because I, I, there were there were a series of videos, um, the YouTube channel. I don't know them, the guy or anything, but it's Full in Bloom. It was called. I watched some of his stuff sometimes, mm-hmm. and uh, he had an interview with. Uh, I want to say I forget who produced this album. Probably Bo, Bo Hill. Hill. I think it was. I think Hill. it was Bo Hill. Well, it had to. Be. It is Bo Hill, and I'm pretty sure that was talked about. And I. I want to say it was it was well, Robin Crosby who was who. One, probably, one thing about the rat legend is that you realize from the behind the music and just listening they had how much respect robin crosby had they, they called him king and obviously when he passed away it was terrible that was basically the end of rat and basically when they just all completely fell apart i think he was the guy that basically kept that band together and they all listened to him yeah um so yeah and he was also like he was so tall that he kind of didn't fit in but and warren was such a flashy player that he doesn't really get a lot of credit uh robin crosby for um for being a guitar player but if you look at their hit songs he wrote almost all of them with the other guys but he was really involved in a lot of their big tunes well and most of their songs if not all of them are very rhythmically driven and it, that yes. comes from him and i'm per- i would be shocked to learn that he w- i'm sure he's the main songwriter on most of their pr- premium material so yeah i mean he was he was you know the a very uh uh, vital member I'm of just, the band to say the least yeah i'm just looking right now on their first record he wrote one two three four five six seven of the songs okay. uh including round and round out of what uh, with ten? other guys nine or ten with, out of ten, ten out of ten with the other guys but i mean that's like you said that's the main song right and then for this record uh lay it down is the robin crosby yeah dude he's the same thing seven Seven, six songs on this record so uh but yeah lay it down is one of his riffs with the other guys too so he definitely had a lot Plus, of contributions i believe he's the last person to bang tawny katane before she married coverdale so there's that well yeah and also too he was banging the chick on the cover of the first rat record and banging the chick on the cover of this rat record as well so he had a, he had quite the uh quite the run marion gravat is the girl who was on the cover of this record. Really? Uh, uh, Invasion of Privacy, yes. Wow. Yes. That's a good... I never so would go. have known that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that must have been part of Robin. the deal. Like, you want to be on the cover, or I'm just going to put... Robin. Or yeah. I'm going to put my girlfriend on the cover. Either way. Either one. Yeah. Exactly. Now, yeah. What, what, it wasn't... wasn't wasn't Tawny Katane on like the first album cover yes. as well? Yeah. She was on the first album cover. He was banging her, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then she met uh, and, Oh, go ahead. <laughs> and are you, are you guys familiar with the, the Slaughter record Stick It To You with that really hot chick on the On the yeah. banging thing? her too. Yeah. What is he Will he that chick. <laughs> <laughs> What's with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't call him King for nothing. King Dong, I think is his I guess. Name. Well, the way it ended up, he's more akin to Magic Johnson uh, in terms of what happened to well, him. So, Well played. One well played. Laker yeah, or another. I mean, it, it, yeah, but, you know, prolific coxman. We know this to be true. <laughs> Um, you know? <laughs> that's a, that's a great that's a great fucking name prolific coxman <laughs> that should be that should be the name of an english like fucking like 70s vibe band like a like a like a faces rod stewart to come out in 2023 and call themselves work. prominent the prominent coxman <laughs> that would work oh sorry the prolific prolific, the prolific coxman co- yes prominent's yeah, pretty right. cool too yeah, prominent, different prominent or- it has the assonance with coxman it kind of flows together so that's good the prominent coxman and they all wear kind of like 
uh, those velvet suits with like the ascot, like but Austin, kind of like Austin Powers looking outfit. Yeah, but 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 they're now like they're yeah. just like kids like twenty two years old now just right. playing like the struts or something like that. Yeah, the yeah. Pro- the prominent coxman. There you yeah. go. Let's get this band yeah. off the ground. We gotta do it. <laughs> we'll put it together like the monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have auditions. But the point is, we, we all know that Magic was stepping out on Cookie, so let's uh, let's not <laughs> let's <laughs> everyone not knows Everyone knows let's that Magic was stepping it out wasn't. on Cookie. The dude was in the NBA. They were rock yeah. and rollers course, in the of 80s. Of course, they're fucking, yeah. But I think, didn't Magic just get married, like, right before that announcement happened, though? Like I that, don't think so. No, I thought it was like think, around the same time. Like he could have I think contracted he's, yeah, it before he, he was maybe married. Maybe got married, but I think he was with Cookie for a long time. It's his wife's <laughs> name, of, man. You know. He got sick of Cookie's Cookie, man. What do you want? Uh, yeah, I be. have a question. I'm glad you brought this up, Chris L. <laughs> of course So Magic you are. Johnson has, has AIDS, right? But well, like, he, he, has never H- died. he has HIV. It never but crossed it over away? AIDS. No, I don't think but it ever does go it away. It needs to progress so, to AIDS, and then that's pretty much when, once you get there, I don't think there's any uh, going back. I'm sorry, I'm getting, lo- about, I'm getting love like, line in my headphones here. <laughs> I need to but tune it. About much, ado, much ado about nothing. The fucking guy was all over the place complaining about having AIDS, and he never fucking had it, and he's still alive doing stuff. So what's the fucking big deal? It does make you wonder... <laughs> It does. It does make you wonder. What the hell's going on? <laughs> you know, what he, what was Magic able to access that others were not able to? Is what you wonder. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's because- that NBA money. If every, if every uh, patient had Magic Johnson's money, it would have gone away for them too, maybe. And it wasn't That's like I mean, we're just going to keep talking about Magic Johnson here, but it wasn't like this happened in like 2010. This was 91. And can I also say you, his fucking name? Yeah, of course. Magic Johnson. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the shit writes itself, right? Yeah, it does. Ma- Magic Johnson. I mean, that's a porn star name. Yeah. Now, you're right. He he uh, married Cookie in 1991. Yeah. So. See? Yeah. Well, he could have contracted the... I mean, he probably do Cookie, but I'm saying he had a, a reasonable explanation for the situation to Cookie because they're still married. I, I believe that's correct. Yeah, yes. The only reason I know any of this, I just saw him on something, and Cookie was there, and I said, I'll be damned. I didn't know he was still married to her. Like, there's my girl Cookie. <laughs> so they, Andy watching Cookie, TV. Cookie Johnson. It's Irvin and his Magic Johnson. Mm-hmm. There it is. <laughs> and by the way, my last name for real is Irvin, so there's a connection there. There you go. If I married Magic Johnson, my name would be <laughs> Irvin Irvin. Oh wow! Oh, wait, his name his name would be Irvin Irvin. He would be yeah if he took your yeah. well your name if he, if he married me right so there's still a chance. <laughs> there's, there's still time. <laughs> He's still kicking. So let's get into this. We got to take a quick commercial break. <laughs> what song are we doing again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Magic Johnson by the Chili Peppers. Yeah. yeah, there, you yeah there you go. M A G I C. All right. Well, let's take a quick. L A Lakers fast break makers. <laughs> Magic's got the funk. <laughs> okay. Let's take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with Lay It Down by Rat off of Invasion of Your Privacy, 1985. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, 1985. Here we go. <laughs> Sounds like Pierre getting thrown like down the Pierre. stairs in the Twilight. Maybe that's how they made that sound. <laughs> um, yeah, so Scary Clown. Probably named Cookie, if you think about it. <laughs> Cookie the Clown. Yeah. Cookies and cakes. Who, he uh, also has HIV, probably. The Clown? The, yes, the Clown. That's actually an HIV-infused cake right there to fuck up <laughs> those kids. Wow. Let's, Get let's them turn into a, a horror movie. <laughs> It's the drug companies. <laughs> the pot of thunder ranting against drug companies. Yes, it is. Yeah. We're not going to be here for 502. We're, we'll be silenced by next week. What, what, what Were you going to say something else about what was happening? Or, or was no, that the, no. That, okay. uh, he took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, hold on a second. 
That's a weird looking kid. Yeah, that's a weird that's, looking that's a kid. that's a Twilight Zone actor looking. Yeah, kid. it's like fucking Damien Damien Thorn Omen kid. Yeah, he's he's pretty creepy. I can't. I don't know why. Damien, I, I did it all for you. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's frightening. That kid popped have, up on fucking painkillers or something. I'm gonna have nightmares tonight. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how they made this kid look like that. Fuck, no filters back then either. This kid's just legit weird. Yeah. Because, like, you can't just make a kid do that. <laughs> that, no. that has to be part of who that kid is. His crazy eyes. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Well, and, but he's he is supposed to be a young Stephen Piercy, so good casting. Oh, is that what, I mean, okay, so I always could never figure out how this fucking relates to lay it down. Well, is it supposed to be Piercy? Yeah, well, yeah. Wait, 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 to, wait till the dialogue kicks in. But okay. yeah, in terms of how it connects to the song, yeah, we can explore that. I'm not really sure either. But this is definitely supposed <laughs> is, to be a young Stephen Piercy here. This is some director uh, had an idea, put this at the beginning, and I guarantee you Rat didn't even know. They saw it come out. Well, what the fuck is this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, you're probably having right. a kickaxe on the on the road to rock video. They're like, what the fuck is this? Well, it has nothing to do with anything. They could have just shopped it around to a variety of bands to put on before their video. That's right, exactly. It has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, and just dubbed over somebody else's name. Yeah, you know, and hey, it's, uh, Billy. Yeah, whatever. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, now, Stephen, blow out the candles. Steven, don't forget to make a wish. Right. Chucko, Chucko, Chucko is his name. It's not Cookie, but Chucko. I was Close. just laughing that this legit could be, like you said, this could be the beginning of an Aerosmith video. Yeah, I was going to say the beginning of a Journey video. Like they just, what, what band can we use it on that has Steven? It could be an well, Iron Maiden it, video. It could be uh, our boy Steven Plunkett of Autograph. <laughs> he could, he could, he he could come in slow motion jumping into the cake <laughs> or out of the cake, whichever you prefer. The classic Plunkett move of dis- descending vintage, from the heavens in slow motion. Vintage, vintage Plunkett. Vintage Plunkett. <laughs> <laughs> prolific Plunkett. There you go. Uh, prolific Plunkett from the prominent cockpit. That's it. Chuckle the Clown. Yeah. Go Now, go back a few seconds just so we get the entirety of this awesome musical a intro. Weird kid, man. Weird kid. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. weird. So Meet weird. Kid. Yeah, he's strange, so freaky. Strange video. But here, so <clears throat> I'm thinking that he just is like, make a wish and his wish is, I want to be a rock star one day and then they kick into the performance footage. That's what I'm that's assuming so far, right? That makes the most sense yeah. to me, but... Does the clown come back, or is that it for the clown? I think Chucko returns uh, at some point. Okay. I'm not super familiar with this, where I know it by heart, but I did remember this opening sequence. And then there's some weird scenes throughout where he's like has his eyes closed and he's grooving to the music. It's very strange. Mm. But <laughs> I'm trying to remember the name, but I don't think I'm going to remember it. So, I'm, I'm, go ahead, Nick. I just I'm I. Decided to go on IMDb just to see who the actors are in this video. Yeah. <laughs> um, the adult version of this kid looks just like the the kid version of this kid. Really? Yeah. Let me see if so I... Is it like Gary Coleman that didn't have a kidney or something? Oh, he never grew? Yeah, let me <laughs> see. I'm going to try to hold it up for you to see here. Uh, uh, you could kind oh. of see it's kind of got a glare, but yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to... It's a little bright. Looks like a serial killer. But it, it, I mean, it's, yeah, it looks, <laughs> that unique look that he's got in this video, he, he's maintained. It didn't go away, huh? <laughs> I, I want to know who Chucko is. It doesn't say. Chucko is himself, <laughs> says in the credits. Because I could see that being like somebody who became very well known. Like, I could see it being Brad Garrett or something. You right. know what I mean? Like, some, just actor. some actor that later on you would have heard of, but mm-hmm. I, I don't see anything. It doesn't say, huh? No, I'm going to keep looking. My quick story, I wish I could remember the name because I think it would add something to it. But for whatever reason, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh, clown's at a birthday party. And I remember one time I was at Rancho Grande. This is like 10 years ago. And they have a little tech board, like a community board. And there was a thing from a clown. (laughs) And it said um, that it was a clown who does birthday parties. 
but that they didn't their license was suspended so they needed rides to birthday parties oh wow so to call this clown <laughs> and that they would hook they would give you some of the money if you would drive them to the birthday parties they have scheduled i thought it was one of the stranger <laughs> things i've ever seen on a community board but, when okay. i was a kid i had a clown that came to my birthday party his name was kedzo the clown i don't know why i remember kedzo. that kedzo how was it yeah. was it fun or was it weird or I don't know. I think probably back in those days, kids just had clowns. There wasn't like evil clowns or anything like that. Yeah. It was just, you know, so Kedzo. It's a cool name. Yeah, Kedzo's cool. You got anything, Nick? No. We're good? All right. No, this is a, this is an ongoing mystery, apparently. Kedzo is the drummer in the prominent Coxman. <laughs> <laughs> just simply Kedzo. <laughs> Not to be confused with Rashbaum. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Rashbaum the clown showed up and it was a really bad birthday party. But. Yeah, I think Rashbaum would be a mime more so than <laughs> yeah. a clown. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's let's lay it down. Here we go. I hated that. <laughs> the the spinning hat turned into It was ridiculous. What yeah. that was legit like Chris L said could have been used for any music video with a guy named Steven in the band. Could have been anybody's, right? Um, yeah. And, go ahead. Sorry. And it's taken away from again yeah. one of the most I, awesome I hair metal riffs yeah. in history of the I was just going to say taking the leaving the video behind the tone of the guitar on this oh. album, on this song, and you're in love as well. It's just fucking next level stellar, man. Yeah, it it's so it's, it's, def- it's genre defining guitar yeah. tone. And it's also for the uh, guitar nerds out there. This is uh, a, 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 one, a song that was in drop D tuning, which became super prominent in the grunge era. But this is uh, like this and Unchained by Van Halen or earlier. Good call. Early yeah. examples of uh, rock songs and drop D tuning, and "You're in Love" is probably that as well. It sounds like it to me, but this one for sure. Another thing I want to point out too is we laugh at the name Blotzer. Obviously, it's ridiculous, but. Uh, the guy's a fucking killer drummer. Like the groove on this, listen to that groove. Yeah. The bass, the bass part he's playing is very strange. Da 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 da. Like that's most drummers would probably just go like do da do da 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 or something like that. He's got a real cool groove with that kick drum pattern. Yeah, underrated. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he's he's no he's no Kedzo from the prominent from the prominent but he's pretty good. Another thing, too, is um, not to interrupt you, I apologize, but I watched Stephen Piercy during the pandemic had a live stream from the Whiskey A Go Go. And the players he has are good, but fuck, man, the guy, it, he didn't have a great drummer to play this stuff. It was okay, but there's a real feel that that Blotzer has that makes these songs come alive. Yep, you're totally right about that. And just uh, guys that never get any of the attention except for people like us who are really into music and and who's in the band and whatnot. But, you know, we've talked about this a little bit in some of the other episodes, but like guys like Blotzer that you think are, are like bit players in the band that could be swapped out with anybody, it's not true. When certain guys are removed from the equation, the whole feel of the band yeah. changes and, and usually not for the better. And I'm, I'm thinking of another drummer. That's a perfect example of that. Like, obviously this blot blots is not this guy, but Phil Rudd, when he, when he, when he left ACDC a couple times, the guys they had to replace him were great. Chris Slade and Simon Wright, but fuck, you can't replace wow. Phil Rudd. You just can't. Right. There's something about him that just makes ACDC better. He he has this this internal clock to him that you just can't. Yeah. And as long as we're talking about drummers in this type of thing, you got to bring up Steven Adler. I mean, great call. Ma- Matt Sorum, great call. Unquestionably a superior technical drummer. I mean, a fucking human metronome, and can play with Flash and cool guy and looks great on stage. All that stuff. But just that Steven Adler just had that yeah. loose style to him yeah. that just uh, when when 
when they switched drummers, it changed the whole dynamic of the band. You're right. totally right about that, and it's funny because when you talk about Use Your Illusion 1 and 2, the one song that Adler played on is Civil War, and it's just different, man. It fucking is just, there's just something about it. I mean, not that, like you said, Matt Sorum is great. Uh, Frank that they have now is great. Frank oh, yeah. Farrar. But, but but like there's something about Steven Adler, even though he's off his rocker, and maybe that's why, that just makes that band dirtier. Yeah. yeah. Quickly, one more thing we need to do before we get back into the song. This kid, the little this little Steven, yeah. is Whit Hertford. Let me read you some of his, uh, <laughs> his, his credits. So his very first credit is young Steven Piercy in the late wow. video. But then he's in the uh, Twilight Zone series in 85, Poltergeist 2, uh, Cagney and Lacey, Nightmare oh on Elm Street 5, Empty Nest, Mr. Belvedere, Full House, The Munsters Today. Oh, I mean, he was he had to be Eddie. He had to be Eddie, right. And then he got into uh, voice acting. He did uh, Tiny Toon Adventures, Tailspin, Little oh. Mermaid TV series. This guy was all over the place. He's fucking hell. He does look exactly himself. the same. It's nuts. Yeah. How weird. <laughs> All right. I, just... I mean, it makes sense that with with his he he, had, he gave a couple of eerie looks there in the beginning of the video. It makes well, sense that he would have been in Nightmare on Elm Street in the Twilight Zone and yeah. And in 2015, else. he portrayed Charles Manson in the 60s thriller Pretty Face. So he was a fucking serial killer. Wow. Well, in fact, I believe he is the one who startled Mr. Belvedere and caused, caused him to sit down on his balls. <laughs> <laughs> he came walking into the reading room and saw him and was so shocked he just recoiled and sat down on his balls. <laughs> and one last thing, uh, Wit is also an abstract painter and we'll be opening for Kiss on the final. <laughs> yeah, there you Good go. to know. <laughs> All right. If you heckle him, he'll turn around and bug his eyes out at you. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Silence an arena of 20,000 with his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone will be looking down at the floor, looking at their shoes. <laughs> looking at their phones uncomfortably. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> well, that is creepy. There's a picture of him here. He looks exactly like the fucking kid, man. And he's like, oh, that's he's, terrible. He's got to be what? Like. He was born in 45. Born in 78. Okay, so there you go. Yeah, 45. Fuck, that's a creepy looking kid, man. All right, let's keep going. That's her. That's got to be Marion Gravat right there in the video. Marianne Gravat, is yeah, that the that, name? that was listed in the IMDb as well. That, that's got to be her, yeah. Yeah. Oh, she was listed for being in this video as yeah. well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh, was she listed in the video? I am. Yeah. It's official. That's Marianne Gravat right yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Fucking hey, man, she looks hot. Yeah, looks good. And 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 as long as we're talking about people's looks, Stephen Piercy to me is the quintessential Sunset Strip front man Ooh. in terms of visuals. The tone of his voice, I think. I think he's a genre-defining figure. Yeah, and it's interesting because he's not a blonde. Yeah, good call. Yeah, yeah. I'll say one thing about Rat Man. They they were a good-looking band. Every guy in that band is pretty good-looking guy. A Blots maybe not so much, but they made always made him look. He looked good. He 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 he, he looked good. Looked better than Crochet. I mean. Crochet had to, had to rely on the winger esque uh, dance moves. That are you when insane? When you, saw, <laughs> when you saw a band picture of Rat, they looked good. They were a good looking band. Yeah, I mean, yes, I mean they they just oozed the Sunset Strip sleeves, yeah. and and Piercy yeah. personifies it like like no other to me. I mean, they and were. He, and he, he had a, a, a unique look as well with the hair on one side, but it wasn't super long. He looked. He definitely was an original. Yes, exactly. And uh, I just, I, when I think of the Sunset Strip sleaze scene, it, he's the guy that I picture. He's just like, to me, the personification of everything about that uh, music scene in one yeah. guy. I 
<laughs> now, I'll forever love the fact that the phrase and how is used in yeah. this song. It's yeah, such a like 1950s Bosco I, I, milk commercial. I was going to say, that's, that's something <laughs> Ralph Malf would say in a Happy Days episode, you know? Beaver, do you like your meatloaf? Yeah. And how, mom? Yeah, exactly. I love it. Right. Yeah, it's it makes That's it even call. better. <laughs> I mean, what awesome. a great chorus when it gets it, it. It kind of comes on pretty quickly. There's not there's not much of a pre-chorus. Yeah. It's I know you really want to lay it down, and then here it is. You yeah, know? that's it. Well, the, the old Bon Jovi motto: "Don't bore us. Get to the chorus." And I, I, I wanted to comment on how thumping the bass sounds for an album recorded in 85 brilliantly produced album Bo Bo Hill was uh, the the A-list guy for all the labels and in fact that that's the the the, are you insane Juan Cruchet line from behind the music is when they're talking about Bo Hill yeah and they're saying that there were a couple of occasions where Bo Hill brought in a session guy to do a guitar solo instead of Warren Demartini because mm. he was like, I need to get this done today. I know this guy can walk in here and nail it. And and that's the the line from Juan is Are you insane? But but sorry. leading leading oh, up to that he's like, You're gonna bring in another guitar player to play Warren Demartini solos? Are you insane? Are you insane? <laughs> and then then Bo Hill is on that episode and he's like, look I was paid very well by the labels to deliver product on time, and I did what I had to do, and that's it. It's a business, right? Yeah. yeah. And I guess, and you know, like, we all know that Martini is an incredible player, but you never know when someone's going to choke up in the studio or they just, uh, or he was out, you know, gallivanting around or who knows what. And Bo Hill's uh, there to deliver product. He's going to call a session guy to come down the block and nail a hair metal solo like a Dan Huff or something like that and be done with it. But it's surprising, though, because when you've got the endorsement of the guy who preceded you, one Jakey Lee, and he's and he publicly says what a great guitar player you are and a great replacement you are, it's it's a bit shocking that someone else needs to be brought in. Well, it is shocking, but, you know... Uh, Tuge can attest to this as well. Not, not, not saying that it affects him personally, but I'm sure you've heard of it. It's just, you know, the studio can be a very intimidating place, especially when you're on a major label and you've got all this pressure to deliver something. Some guys yeah, and, just can't and, cut and, it. And sometimes a producer will, will hear something that, that maybe the, the guy's not great at. Maybe he wanted something a little more bluesier, and Warren's not a blues player, or maybe he wanted right. something, you know, whatever it may be. That's why you, it's, it's just like cherry pie. Why would you bring in CC DeVille to play the solo on cherry pie when the other guy in Warren is way better than CC DeVille? Maybe there's something CC brought to the table that fucking thought, well, fuck, just have him do it. It's great. I love it. We want a CC DeVille esque solo here. Why don't we just call CC DeVille then? Yeah. You know, because yeah. looking at, looking at Bo Hill's discography, he was Rat's main guy. He was Warrant's main guy. And he was Winger's main guy. So yeah. maybe you know, maybe, maybe he wanted something that that Warren wasn't great at. You know, exactly. So and said, we don't, Chris. Instead of having Warren do twenty takes on a blues solo, that's probably not going to give me what I want, anyways. I'll bring in fucking Dan Huff. He's going to do it in twenty minutes, and we'll be done with it. Yeah, and we don't we don't know which songs they're referencing, and it's not like he, they didn't insinuate that he just replaced Warren D. Martini on the recordings, but it's like if it's one particular solo that's not coming together, he's gonna get on the phone and have somebody over there in a half hour yeah. and get be done with it. And the thing is once you once you get over the ego of, of being a band in a band, you realize that all that matters is the song. It doesn't matter who wrote it, who fucking plays on it, whatever. And Gene Simmons has said this for years, all that matters is the song itself. Mm-hmm. And whether you play it or not, if you take your ego out of it, it's just better for the band, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, so, and then you yeah. go out and you play it live and you're a member of the band that everybody's buying a ticket to see and everything's hunky-dory. Everyone thinks it's you playing on it anyways, so who right. gives a shit? Yeah, wasn't that a thing with, I can't remember which video, probably more than one, but where Gene 
really doesn't know what the song even is on some of those 80s kiss videos X and like, X. yeah he's, like he's he like I, know how it goes, yeah, yeah he doesn't even know he and, play and rock it. hard as well you have yeah. no idea how that one goes you can tell yeah so there you go it happened <laughs> no, and, gene, and, and bruce kulik will tell you and gene too like bruce played bass on most of those records because gene was like well bruce knows how I, how I play bruce knows what i like just have bruce do it <laughs> yeah and whatever's whatever we're gonna play on the tour i'll learn that one or two i'll learn those ones in the video i'll kind of like watch rock hard he has no idea what fucking <laughs> no, part he he's on no, and that's... like when he's supposed to sing <laughs> you make me rock hard he's like oh, whatever yeah. i got fuck i gotta go film the uh, runaway so runaway, just get it yeah. over exactly <laughs> Great chorus, but and I am enjoying Crochet's moves here. Yeah, those were his signature. <laughs> I mean, moves it, 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 he's no. he's. I don't know. I mean, we're saying that it's well known that he is over exaggerated. Well, I mean, I don't know that from what I'm seeing here that he's even in the same league as Rudy Sarzo as far as over exaggerated no, physical you're movements. Pro- you're right, and then <laughs> and then obviously the 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 ballerina moves of Kip Winger yeah. became the stuff of legend later on in the decade. But, uh, well, and if you look at it nowadays, like fucking Yannick Gares and Iron Maiden is like way worse than than Juan Cruce for sure. Oh yeah, he's just um, twirling the whole time, right? Yeah. Thumbs up to the costumes in this video too. That's another thing I like about Rad is uh, they always had kind of really cool. You could tell that you know somebody made these costumes for them. It's not a jeans and t-shirt type of band, nor nor were a lot of bands at this time frame. But it just looks better on them than it does on like Motley Crue, for example. Hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. And um, yeah, looking back, so this this album came out on June thirteenth, nineteen eighty five, which is probably within the same week I graduated high school, and then uh, you know three months later I was in college, and just hearing whenever I hear the song, I'm transported back to that floor in college. I mean, the 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 the, the, the clowns I lived with in, in the dorm, they would crank this song daily for the whole freshman year and I, I i personally thought it was great i mean it wasn't a day that i can remember where i didn't hear lay it down uh, blasting out of somebody's room on the floor oh what's that cool little creep doing <laughs> <laughs> Look at that little weirdo. That little kid's got his eyes closed and he's snapping his it's, fingers. It's bizarre, man. It, he's kind of jerking off, the little weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> little creep playing like with his wiener line, at the uh, birthday party. <laughs> I like that line, under the sheets you will find me. Yeah, like It's just go. like as a 14-year-old kid when this came out, I always thought, oh, that's pretty sexy. Like, it's very I don't even poetic. know what that means, but he's under the sheets with the girl and he, you can find him there. Yeah. So I like that line. The other thing about, about Stephen Piercy and Rat, like he's got, he reminds me a lot of Bon Scott, and, and I'll tell you the reason why. Not in vocal quality, but when he sings his lines, there's a certain sleaziness to it exactly. that you buy. Like yeah. when he delivers these under the sheets, you can find me and all this stuff. It's like I believe what he's saying. He he sounds like a, just a fucking dude is having sex every night yeah. and fucking banging chicks like there's no yeah. there's no there's no playing with this guy no you and, and you d- you wouldn't want your daughter listening to music no. like this it'd be like if you if you heard this music coming out of your daughter's bedroom you would kick the door down <laughs> you would you would throw the stereo out the window you would get rid of this music yeah. because you believe it coming from this guy and on also bond scott it's like this guy is just a, a dangerous individual yeah and when like when bond sang those lines like you know uh there's a wet patch on her seat is it coca-cola <laughs> like it just oh it yeah just sounds like you know he's fucking means it or he's experienced it or whatever yeah. and i always found that with stephen piercy as well and the thing with me like I never got to see Rat during their glory years because they never came to Winnipeg. I don't know mm. why they never came. So I didn't see Rat until 2000, 2005, and it wasn't the same then. But I would assume live he probably had a great presence too just because he does on vocal and, and just in these videos, you know? Yeah, really before uh, uh, slippery, slippery When Wet broke open the next year in 86, Rat was like at the top of the heap of the hair metal uh 
Ross. Did you, they were an, an arena band. Yeah, Le- Legit, on this album, Headlining. they were playing arenas. That's pretty crazy. Right? Yeah. So did it go Quiet Riot, Rat, Bon Jovi? I, I like think, That was I like the kings in order at the time? I, I, as then, I recall, I can't crew, think of any other. Then crew, po- yeah. Poison crew, after crew, that, probably? Yeah. I yeah. think Crew was playing had, were playing arenas on Theater of Pain, which was also they were so they, okay. They're in there. Yeah. And Theater of Pain was another album that got played a lot on, in my college dorm. And but just sonically, it didn't compare to the Rat. The Rat album just sounded so much better and heavier. Yeah, and the thing with the Crew with Theater of Pain, like I understand, you know, that's part of the pantheon is they always kind of change things up. But when you look, listen to fucking Shout of the Devil and how dirty and heavy it is. Yeah. And then Theater Pain comes out just, and it's not as dirty and it's not no. as heavy. And the look, yeah. the look went completely in the opposite direction. That, that, that almost fucked them in a yeah. lot of ways, at least for, in my school. We still like Motley Crue, but it was like, this is getting a little bit too close to the edge. It's too much. Yeah, I you agree know, with you. It they it was it was a strange uh, pivot when they when they were headed in one direction that everybody was loving, and yeah. then, then smoking in the boys' room video comes out and you're like, dude, hey, I'm not, I don't and, like this look. There's too much pink and, and, and there's white a harmonica. And, yeah, the harmonica, too much <laughs> pink. Long, yeah, and and the, the first song on the record was City Boy Blues, which to this day is still like. Why would you kick off a record like that? Like the last thing we heard yeah. was fucking bastard and mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the danger and fucking de- knock him dead kid. And he was city boy blues yeah, and it, it was pink and it's, it's shit. Yeah. It was so, weird, man. So at this point in time, rat was almost bigger than crew because even though that might not have been as strong material wise, they, they kept the, the ship steady. They mm-hmm. built upon what they did with Out of the Cellar. They still looked really fucking cool. They had some great heavy riffs like Lay It Down. So at this point in time, had things gone a different direction, Rat might have ended up where Crew is touring stadiums and Crew could be where Rat is now, which is basically in, in the Where Are They Now file, right? Yeah. yeah. It's splintered, right, at this point? Yeah, exactly. Are, are there multiple Rats going on right now? Are they there was a Bobby Blotzer had his version and then Piercy had the other version. Dude, at one point about five or six years ago there was four rats. <laughs> Why not just have there one was, rat? One for each Blotzer letter rat. in the band. There was Cruce, one Cruce plays the hits of rat. Oh god. There was Piercy and there was Warren D. Martini who actually owns rat. Yeah. Okay. He wasn't touring on it, but that's technically the fourth rat. There's four fucking rats. Wow. Just if you all want to do it, just figure out a way to make it work. <laughs> just do. It. Yeah. But Piercey always says to this day that they should do one more tour with the with the original lineup, with the exception, obviously, of of uh, of, of Robin uh, Crosby. And they had a pretty good deal. They had Carlos Cavazzo playing playing yeah. that part, and they were pretty they were pretty good, pretty good band. Carlos is a good player. So. Yeah. Yeah, but I think that. I think the ship has sailed. You know, people yeah. people clamor for Skid Row to get back with Bach, and it's just like Never. if that if that happens, they're they're not playing big venues. I mean, everybody there are people who think they're going to fill fucking hockey arenas with that. Maybe twenty five no. years ago. I don't think Not ever, now. man. They never did. Yeah, they, they never, never did. Arenas. So I don't think they that did. it would have come around to that with time. Yeah, no, being, they, they no. played, they, the only place they ever played arenas in their heyday was Japan. But in the States, there were the perennial opening act for Aerosmith, Bon Jovi. And yeah. when Skid Row came to Calgary, they played the Max Bell Center, which holds about 3,000 people. And that was their peak. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, Sebastian, Sebastian coming back is not going to make them play arenas, and they're just going to fucking hate each other because he's such a fucking asshole. There's your clickbait. That um, <laughs> that it's, it wouldn't last anyways. And Snake and Rachel, like we don't need the hassle, man. Yeah, so not, maybe that's the same with Rat. Maybe there's too much under the bridge at this point. They've made it clear that not in a million years is that ever going to happen. So yeah, nor should it. The nor only the only way it would ever make sense would be if it was like one of those. Uh, motley crew the tour or whatever like the the tour that yeah, just yeah, happened, yeah, yeah. Right, where right, it's right, like right. we want you guys but we want sebastian yeah. and you guys and we're gonna pay you x otherwise they're not playing those big venues no and they're not making no. that big money and no. they already said they don't care about the money they want to play music because they have fun doing it the guy they have singing now is better than sebastian is now so what's you know yeah yeah they, gonna go they, see skid row they're gonna go see skid row yeah. whether sebastian's in the band or not there you go all right, let's keep going with this little creep. This creepy this. fucking jacking off little weirdo. <laughs> I know that nothing's for free. You take what's good for you, please. I'll take. <laughs> I 
always kind of thought it's kind of weird, like cool, but they're like in a forest kind of like <laughs> yeah. the background of the videos, like kind of trees and stuff. It's like a, it's like, like a, the hell. It's like the Halloween video. Oh. Yeah. I could call Nick. It's like the Halloween was, video. They use the, the same uh, stuff. Or the, the, uh, sabotage, uh, Hall, Hall yeah. of the Mountain King. King. Hall of the Mountain King. Well, I yeah. think that movie and uh, Cabin Boy, or that video and Cabin Boy, <laughs> use the same sets <laughs> when he goes to see Medusa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> These pipes are clean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this looks like a high school stage production background of like a forest. You yeah, know, yeah, good have. call. It's kind of like lit up that way. It's called the Westwood High School's production of Hansel and Gretel. Exactly. <laughs> so That's w- it. When's Milton Berle going to be in this? Ah, oh, good call. <laughs> or is that him in the background? <laughs> <laughs> he was actually uh, Chucko the Clown. Yeah. Is that part of him in the background? Yeah, he's, he's laying on his back <laughs> behind <laughs> Stephen <laughs> Pierce. <laughs> he is oh, as, the, as the forest. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's holding up the backdrop <laughs> with his <laughs> dick. <laughs> Just lights at multiple angles behind him to get that effect. <laughs> oh my gosh! The little known fact is that Marion Gravatt actually broke up with Robin Crosby to go suck on fucking Milton Berle's log cock. I, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised. Legendary. Yeah. The stories of Milton Berle. And, and Milton Berle apparently had no problem showing everybody who well, he came across. Well, so would you if you were in, as endowed as Uncle Milty. Yeah. Also, Adam West too apparently had a big, uh, big schlong. Really, Adam West too. Yeah, Matt, Adam West. Well, isn't yeah. it, what? No, I think it was. Uh, it was uh, what Dick Ward was the was Bert, Rob Bert Ward. Ward. Bert Ward played Dick Grayson, mm-hmm. but um, <laughs> apparently I don't know why I'm thinking that. Enough. Yeah, but Both wasn't are. wasn't that a an, like an urban legend uh, or maybe true that they had to doctor up the uh, the tights the that that they were wearing for the Batman series. I thought or? it was Adam West, but maybe it was both of them. Maybe they were pulling trains on chicks of the 60s with their big hogs. Who knows? That might be how they got that part. Just two guys with monster rods. <laughs> actually, it was, actually, it was neither of them. It was Alfred who had the biggest <laughs> dick of the whole crew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Alfred was known for tying it in a knot at urinals. <laughs> Bur- Burgess Meredith and the Penguin had a huge rod. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. These are all possibilities. <laughs> I want to find out. See, who I, else mean, is- I always, I always oh, love uh, when these shows start. They always start kind of normal. I'm like, which direction is it going to oh, go that's in? That's the beauty of the show, yeah. and it hasn't changed in season three. <laughs> Yeah, it hasn't changed in season three exactly. Caesar Romero, probably a monster. Uh, and he wouldn't shave his mustache for it. No, for he wouldn't. the close ups of it. No, absolutely yeah, it's not. Like, it's like Peter Chris had a mustache, is what the rumor was. A lot of people said. Oh, yeah. King Diamond and uh, Caesar Romero, <laughs> two guys who just put makeup right over their mustache. Yeah. I just thought that was a weird monster look. Cocks. King Diamond had a monster <laughs> cock, apparently. So, him big, too. Big, big Danish dong. Jeez. <laughs> I feel left out over here and just keep naming everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently everyone. Right. Oh, my gosh. Well, again, getting out of the genre, everybody knows about Huey Lewis's. Uh... Really? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You didn't know about that? I didn't That's know. That's a legendary. Uh, no, I have, I have a great Huey Lewis story if you'd like me to tell you. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah, sure, go Love for Huey it. Lewis. So I was in Australia. I flew home through LAX. I get off the plane. I got a little bit of layer. I'm walking down the concourse. Huey Lewis walks right past me. I turn around and go, where's Huey Lewis going? He sits down at a bar. So I go sit down at the bar next to him. Beside us, there's a couple chicks. And the chick, one chick goes, hey, look at that. It's Huey Lewis. And she's talking as loud as I'm talking. Mm-hmm. Like literally, we're like, and she's like, that's Huey Lewis. And the girl goes, wow, he looks old. Oh. And Huey looks at her and goes, you ain't no looker either, sister. <laughs> Man, <laughs> you ain't no looker either. And sister. how? Yeah, and how? And how? Right. Damn. And exactly. I'm in the middle. I'm like, fucking go, Huey. I'm like, fuck. You got to whisper. He's right here. Yeah. Good yeah. guy. Fucking. Well, we had a drink. Uh, you know, he's good. Good guy. Oh, so you did, you did yeah. say hello, huh? There's no. I it. did. I did. I said. I did say hello. I didn't bug him. But hey, what's up, man? You know, big fan. And you know, typical shit that you should never say to somebody you're trying to have a conversation with. But I didn't care. I was fucking jet lagged, and I was just laughing. Hey, we called her. A, you ain't no looker. <laughs> How did that end up? Was that the end of the interaction between those oh, two women? Oh, they were super embarrassed. I'm like, How, you, you, did you think you said that 
to yourself like you fucking said it super yeah, loud he's sitting, he's right, sitting there. right here he's a fucking legend well, uh, you know fuck off there's no inside voice for the common bar fly i don't think <laughs> so, that could be a line in the prominent coxman song it's especially the uh, the the airport bar flies yeah, yeah come on Maybe it's a blessing that Huey's gone deaf in recent years, huh? He doesn't have to put Maybe, up with that yeah, anymore. Maybe he doesn't have to hear those horrible comments anymore from the bar flies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Poor guy. All right, let's keep going. I mean, if someone had recorded him just saying that line to those girls and released it as a single in 1987, it would have broken the top ten, I have a feeling. Just okay, with that, with that, that, he could that, do no wrong. With that voice of his. If that line was on sports, it would have been a top ten. It would have been a big top ten hit. <laughs> sports, what a name for an album! <laughs> was is that like a double meaning? Of... I just watched a video about it. Okay, um, he it's basically because they were Huey Lewis and the News. Oh, so, so it's oh, like the sports so, section. Yeah, basically, that's even the worse TV than news. I thought. Maybe, you know? maybe worse. But Did they have a. I think they might have had an album called Weather. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They did. Fairly they did. Recently. did the Huey News and the News yeah, yeah. and Weather. Come on, Huey. <laughs> he's but man. he's so charming. You can't you can't hold it against him. Yeah, he's awesome, man. Great guy. Yeah. One of one of my all time uh, greatest. Uh, yeah, they did have a yeah. Their newest record is called Weather. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite memories was uh, not favorite memories. We were playing at Minneapolis, and uh, at First Avenue, which is Prince's Club, Fozzy and the most random appearance of one Sean Hopper, who is the keyboard yeah, player in the news. the news and has been since the seventies. He's one of the, there's three originals, including Huey. And he showed up. He was a big Fozzie fan. I'm like, really? Whoa. Yeah. Like, why are you here? He's like, yeah, I play with Huey Lewis. Like, I fucking know who you are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, what's going on? What? What are you, he's like, oh, just a big fan. My wife likes you guys. We like you guys. We love First Avenue. I'm like, fuck, dude, dude this is great. <laughs> That's awesome. Better than meeting fucking Eddie Van Halen. Was that where he was living at the time? Or he yeah, was... he's, yeah, he lived there, yeah. Okay. He, oh, yeah. He was, the he news. Sean possibly the greatest background harmonies of, oh, yeah. of any band I could think of for sure. Was he one? Oh, of wow. The, yeah, I, they're great. Oh, the, just collectively. I mean, listen to this is it the back, you know, the harmonies and that incredible. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. They do. They great do. It. I, I don't know how much they play live now with Huey's hearing. They, they don't, they they don't, don't play much anymore. I, the Huey I, I yeah. saw them. I don't know, probably 15 years ago, something like that. And uh, they, uh, what is it? Um, so in love, as I think the one where oh, it's like, the... like a doo wop kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah, where, yeah, where yeah they're basically yeah, yeah. no instruments. It's just every guy crowded around the microphone. It sounded, it sounded incredible. Yeah, those guys are no, Dude, they're not chumps. No, mm -mm. there's five top ten hits on sports: Heart and Soul, I Want a New Drug, Harder Rock and Roll, If This Is It walking on a thin line i mean all those songs are amazing on one fucking record dude that's crazy yeah. and what year is that 85 Eight, that was 84 84 80, or 83 uh, 83 and then four and four came has out. six and has six and then power of love's not on any of those not on any came of out them. on 85 wow. yeah listen, listen, listen for stuck with you hip to be square Jacob Slatter, I know what i like doing it all for my baby it's like till, all those songs are killer it's yeah. like it's like yeah. hysteria yeah, yeah, you're it's right. Just like hit yeah. after hit, or yeah. in uh, in excess kick. There's like six top tens on that yeah, too. There you go. Damn. Yeah, that's how it was back in those days. Uh, right? Interesting, you bring that up. I was gonna. Um, we were talking about behind the music. There was something that uh, I think it was Bono said in the in excess behind the music, which I think, in a way, to what I hear of Stephen Piercy's vocal qualities, I think can kind of apply. It was that he. He thought Michael Hutchins sounded like a twelve-string guitar when he was singing. There's a, there's like a multi-tone quality to Stephen Piercy's voice. Oh, okay, um, I see what you I'm mean. I'm not saying. At first, I was like, "What does that even mean?" There's a right. full, there's a okay. fullness. There's like even a bit of extra somehow thrown in. There's there's something. He's not known as a great vocalist, but there's there's a character to it, and there's I, I don't know. There, there's just something to it where it's it's bigger than it probably should be. Yeah, because it, 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 it's it's you wouldn't call it a full voice either. It's almost kind of nasally, but it's just yeah, good call. It sounds and, great, and it's and, and not a lot of range. He basically sings in the same range the whole time. And we were actually yeah. laughing. Uh, we did a, a classic album clash with the guys from um, Shout Out Loudcast of Invasion of Your Privacy and uh, Out of the Cellar. And there's a ballad 
on uh, on a, a invasion of your privacy called One Step Closer to Your Heart. And does he sing and in the same tone? It, it's just he's not a ballad singer. Yeah. Like, it's just not good, right? Like yeah. it's just it's just this, this, he has the one the one range that he sings. Not like Mick Jagger. He's got one range that stays in that level, and he can still sing in that range now, which means he can still sing all the material. Yeah. Which is good. I mean, if you you, yeah. you know your limitations and you don't uh, wander outside of them, that's that's what you should do. Yeah, and then the band can write around that. Like they, they mm -hmm. know what, what sounds best, and they can you know put the songs together accordingly. A wise man has got to know his limitations. Yes, he does. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. What's been There, the, the, you mentioned that earlier. There's this there's a really good bass line going on here. There's a lot going. It, it's really almost like modern Gene or a McCartney or something where there's a lot of kind of playing against the notes mm -hmm. that I really think is pretty cool. And like you said, the, the the tone of it and production of it and the mix is really good for a Sunset Strip band for bass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it really complements the kick drum too. They go together. Yeah, very they're playing nice together. Too. It's a great rhythm section here in this band at this point in time. Yeah, and I was just thinking about how you know it's it's def the the weak link in the whole production of it is what was pretty weak throughout a lot of hair metal is the snare drum. It's just it doesn't have any crack to it. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah, to yeah. Hear. But the rest of it sounds so great that it doesn't even bother me like it normally would in a an eighties band. Normally, I key in on the snare. It's like sounds like a fucking rack tom. There's no punch or crack yeah. to it but mixed in with everything else on here it doesn't even bother me and the kick drum has got a good vibe to it right mm -hmm. so yeah. it's like and because of that like for me at least that pattern that's like you're right very bottom like you know but yeah well but, fuck it's 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 very groovy and, and like listen i'm not a great drummer but i'm a, a serviceable drummer and that i couldn't play that beat i'd have to really work hard it's not easy to do i mean obviously if you're a great drummer it's easy but it's it's really kind of interesting thought of why he put that there yeah it's almost like the the the, the kick drum patterns at the beginning being or beginning of uh good times bad times zeppelin where he's playing yeah. like quadruplets on the fucking kick pedal yeah, it's like yeah, how yeah, is he yeah, even yeah. doing that it's crazy yeah, yeah it's a it's, it's a very nico mcbrain style as well with it yeah yeah there you go <laughs> What's, I can't understand what I, he's saying. I can't either. I've, I can't I've never understand known. either. But when you when you're trans transposing it with kindergarten age kids, what's happening here? The, the, the that was kind of weird. It's a little skin crawling. Yeah. It's also a great dynamic though, um, from that whispering, and then he kicks it back in with with his you know if you give me just one chance, and then he goes back to the whisper again for romance, which is coming up. But let's see if we can find out what he said there. Nick's um, on it. I Nick's think I've got it. it. Oh, it's yeah. is it? Am I in the right yeah. spot here? Um, I know you only want romance. Yeah. I'll give you all that I can, if you give me just one chance to prove myself and my love. Ah, oh, I yeah. never knew you said to prove myself and my love. It, it could be worse. It could be much worse. <laughs> <laughs> it could be it the video. Yeah. yeah. It was worse in my head. What I, I couldn't hear it, but what I was imagining was worse. Well, it's definitely worse when kindergartners are saying that to each other, <laughs> which when they, they switch it's, back it, to the part. But it's, <laughs> it's fairly innocent, at least, during that part. It's not the lyric, though. I, I think, for me, I like the dynamic. The whisper into the full voice, back into the whisper that goes into the soul. Yeah. yeah. And, that's, and that's, you know, one, another thing that probably... You know the the producer Bo Hill sort of 
encouraged them to do or they collectively yeah. collaborated and came up with that but that's something that like you, you you craft in the studio and a, and a guy with an ear for it is says try this or do that and it comes out great i would guarantee that when they wrote that part he was singing the whole thing in full voice and bo hill said hey try a whisper here i, I guarantee it yep. just knowing how, how how i am as a singer i would write the part and i'm singing it here i'm singing it there because you want to be a singer right uh, i bet yeah. you i'm the same way I, I, it yeah. screams to me that the, this is one where like he did the take and then from the control room yeah. bo hill is like let's try this yeah and it's like great okay. take steven now, do me a favor and whisper <laughs> that part what yeah. just give it a try <laughs> right exactly right pretty buried in the mix though the solo i would say it, it i i like what he's playing but pretty buried right i think some of it's because the, listening to it at least for me um the, the sound is going out because we're watching the video maybe, maybe. okay yeah, yeah because on the record it's not that and that fucking solo is a great solo it's a it's a great yeah. solo and it, it's i there's i have no issue with it following the uh the vocal melody in some spots yeah it's not like um, it's not just a full shred fest no. from start to finish it's melodic yeah. and ties in with the uh, what's going on in the song which again is another one of those situations where he might have come in just shredding and bo hill hits the mute button and says let's do something a little restrained and melodic here and uh, you know, maybe it happened, maybe it didn't, but those are the kinds of things that producers will will step in and suggest that they do something differently, maybe. I find, like, we talk about the Scorpions as a band are super underrated when you're talking about 80s, 80s bands. I find Warren D. Martini is super underrated as a guitar player. Absolutely. You never, ever, ever hear him mentioned. You know, you know, it's Van Halen and it's even Jakey e. Lee or whoever was playing with Ozzy at the time. And, you know, the, the main guys, the priest guys and, and when the, Vivian Campbell and et cetera, et cetera. You never really hear about Warren Demartini, you know, mm -hmm. maybe it's maybe it's because he's not enough of a character. He wasn't a very good interview. He wasn't very like, you know, I don't know, uh, outgoing, maybe or whatever it may be. Why do you guys think that he's so underrated as a player? Mm -hmm. His well, solos are always awesome. Yeah, and I, I, he, there were so many other, like, uh, dominating personalities in the band that he kind of, like you said, he, he wasn't a character. He wasn't, like, the focal point. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just think there were so many other great players out there that he just got kind of a little bit lost in the shuffle. But, you know, mo most guitar nerds certainly hold him in very high esteem and, uh, and still do. I just think at that time period, all the guitar magazines were too busy putting uh, Vinnie Moore on their covers. Yeah. And also, too, listen, hey, man, this is a little thing, but his name is Warren. Yeah. That's not a superstar name. That's true. And, and let's face it, very ethnic last name doesn't always, you know... <laughs> It's it, how many people have changed their names, you know? Cause, yeah. Because they sound. He should have called himself George Lynx. <laughs> If you know, you know. Yeah. I heard a couple, actually not heard, a, there was a point in time, maybe in the early 2000s, maybe late 90s, where Demartini was actually in White Snake for a spell, a short period of time. Really? I vaguely and I was like, remember that, yeah. That would be a fucking, like, he never also ever played with anybody. When Rat stopped, he, you know, like, if he would have got the White Snake gig, for example, maybe that would have put him, like, it sure did wonders for Doug Aldrich and Joel Hoekstra and those fucking guys. You know, um, so who knows? The fact he's not active maybe is another thing. Um, yeah, isn't he married to someone who does really well financially, so he doesn't need to be in a band or something? I thought I heard that about him, where either he's married to someone from a rich family or he comes from a rich family, so he's like... 
he's not really motivated to be constantly into music because he doesn't need it yeah. financially. So that might have something to do with it. Well, and I think I think he's the owner of Rat. I think him and Piercy own Rat, and they're the only two that do with all the business dealings and blots are being crazy and stuff. So yeah, you know, he round and round is a massive, massive tune. I bet you that pays their mortgage every fucking year, right? Oh, you know, not to mention yeah. Not to lay it down and all the rest of them. Didn't they have a Geico commercial a few years ago? Yeah, they do. That yeah, didn't hurt, do. I'm sure. Well, but Mar- D. Martini didn't participate in that. It was- so here we go. A little bit of a quick thing. So after Rap broke up, Warren was in Dawkins for a short period That's of time. Right. Then he was touring with White Steak in 94. Then he was hired to replace Doug Aldrich and Dio. Mm. But after several rehearsals, he left the band due to musical differences with Ronnie James Dio. A.K.A. They didn't get along. But I said that like a Dio gig would have been perfect for him. Yeah. To, to get his name out there, right? Yeah, that would have been good. And then that was it. He kind of just hung out at home for a while. Yeah, and he, I think from what I understand, he just has no problem sitting at home, uh, uh, making fucking royalty checks, and he's done with it. So it's not a bad way to live. Yeah, I got no issue with that. Yeah, if the yeah, money's yeah. coming in. Yeah, exactly. You know, but that, that, that's probably why he's underrated, then I would say. Yeah. Look at all those uh, bracelets Piercy's got yeah, stacked. <laughs> Look at that. It's too much of a hassle to put. I got bracelets. It's hard to take them on and put them off. It's the shit. Yeah. I was going to say, he's got even more uh, chunky jewelry on than Jericho does, uh, typically, <laughs> which that's, is no small feat. That's Chucko jewelry. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he's got a couple of necklaces. Is that like a. Yeah. Uh, a lock, maybe. I don't know. Maybe a lock and key. He's got some braids in his hair, though. That's not a headband on his on his shoulder. Yeah, like a, he's got first. like a pirate kind of hairdo yeah. going. Yeah, and always had a, he was always like a rock and roll pirate sort yeah. of thing, right? Yeah. A little bit of a Joe Perry type vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the kid was totally jacking off. Yeah, he was. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's very awkward looking why they made him do that. It's just strange, weird. The thing is, they didn't ask him to do it. He just started doing it because he's yeah. fucking possessed by the yeah. diva. <laughs> exactly. He's riffing <laughs> on the set. I'd also like to make a complaint that Marianne Gravat, uh, who is a Playboy centerfold and looks amazing on the cover of the record, is wearing like, this flowing dress thingy. Less clothes. Come on, man. It's the fucking 80s. Well, that's a good point. She wouldn't get away with that in a Wasp video, I'll tell you that. Yeah, that wouldn't fly with Blackie. <laughs> that kid would have been good in a Wasp video, though. <laughs> Blackie would behead him, that's why. <laughs> and then throw his, his the, bleeding head into the crowd. <laughs> yeah. The kid's head would have been in a plasma ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, she 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 wanted to be kind of understated because she didn't want to give Milton Berle an even larger erection. <laughs> uh, it would have just crashed through the roof given his uh, on his back for the orientation. With Burt Ward and yeah. Adam West later on that night. Exactly. <laughs> the set is like a honey. I shrunk the kids and Milton Berle's pubes. <laughs> They're wandering around. <laughs> <laughs> Playing the part of a crab, Robin Crosby. What did you wish for? What are, I don't know. I can't really see it. There's like the next video thing popped yeah. up. Did he put his thumbs up? What did he, he do there? He, he blew like as he went like, like, like blew on his fingers and gave a thumbs up. Basically, the little, we're insinuating that this little kid's getting laid. <laughs> it's very what, strange. What's the fucking, um, In 20 uh, years. What's the, uh, the, 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 is it a clothes line or a furniture line that's under fire right now for having like pedophile images in its advertising? Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, it's, wow. it's the big thing right now. It's all across. Like they have, they have literal pedophile images in their ad. This is the same thing. Same company. It's terrible. Yeah, it's very weird. You know, this little kid's going to go have little kid sex with the, with the little kid. It's yeah, weird. And Chucko's going to be orchestrating the whole thing. Yeah. It's all Chucko's fault. Chuckle, Chucko's in the slammer right now. Yeah. <laughs> I still don't understand what that had to do with the, with the song. 
Well, like I said, I think he's just he's just make it his birthday party, young Stephen Piercy, make a wish. I, I want to be a huge rock star in the eighties. That's my theory on it. Okay, well that could be it. That could be it. All right. Well, I want Chucko the clown to stop touching me inappropriately. That would be nice too. That would be a good wish. Get show Chucko us where Chucko the clown. Show us on this doll where Chucko the clown <laughs> touched you at the birthday party, Stephen. Uh, it's called Balenciaga, and is the name of it. It's uh, it, it's mm. the one that has these terrible ads. It's uh, yeah. It, it's it, it was um, one of the Kardashians' favorite. Uh, clothing lines, gift shop, whatever the hell it is, and now it's under fire and it's going to get run out of business for that sort of stuff. Great. So Rat, rat might follow. Wow. This be it. Wow. This, this could be, be it for, it for Rat. <laughs> 35 years yeah, later, they finally they're, got They're high. canceled. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> gone the way of Jeffrey Epstein and the like. <laughs> and Juan Epstein. Yeah. <laughs> Not to be confused with Juan Croce. Oh. No. All right, so... Chris L, you picked the song off the listener submission list. What are you going to do? Oh, you got to vote. Sweet surrender. Sweet surrender. Sure. It's sweet surrender. Hell yes. Hell yes. The word I use for this band, this front man, and this song in particular is iconic. Defi- genre defining stuff. Everything about it. The riff, the whole arrangement of the song the look of the front man the sound of the front man the whole thing is to me d- defines the whole sunset strips sleaze better than anything i can think of uh so yeah absolute sweet surrender for me nick a sweet surrender as well it's sweet surrender I never got too deep into Rat. Um, you know, would check them out once in a while. Even checked out the Mickey Rat demos and stuff like that, and you know, appreciated it. Oh, that's but... right. There was that was the name of the band, huh? Yeah, with yeah, when when, get J- it. when Jakey Lee was in there. Um, Mickey Rat. But this song, wow. I I like a, a lot of the stuff I'll hear. It, okay, I like it. It's fine. But this one, it's like I'm putting this on a playlist right now. Like yeah, I'm actually man. making a new playlist so I can have this as the first song. Like it's it's yeah. it's that great. Love the uh, just that main riff, um, the vocal melody that's put over it, the uh, the production, the the chord changes, the arrangement, uh, just everything. I think it's just like an awesome like when you hear it, it's like yeah like especially i think if you're a guy and you hear it there's something very masculine about musically what's going on here hmm. i i think so because it's it's one of those songs where it gets the blood pumping and maybe maybe the ladies enjoy it too i don't know oh, they do oh, they obviously did but yeah. but i mean this is this is like yeah this is a guy song in my opinion just to get can get you pumped up chris J. Uh, sweet surrender for sure. It's sweet surrender. Hell yes. Uh, we just did the uh, Australia tour with uh, Buck Cherry, and whenever Josh said that, hell yes, either on stage or off, I always thought of you guys. So. That's nice. <laughs> did, um, he, did he say it all the time? No, but he, oh, okay. a couple times he said it. Yeah. Okay. And that they're they're fucking great. And I, I I love those guys and I love Buck Cherry, but that's another story. Uh, this like like Nick said, this um, as huge as Round and Round is, and it's a great tune and Wanted Man and um, uh, Back for More. This might be my favorite Rat song. I think it's one of the best written songs of the whole eighties. Mm-hmm. Um, much like Heaven's on Fire, it's I couldn't think of anything I would change about it. The groove is great. The guitar solo is great. Chorus is huge. The guitar riff is huge. Tone is great. Um, so I think I think this was the peak of Rat. And I think there's some bands that have it all until you get to album three, four, five, and then the real band comes out, right? Because you've got your whole life to write your first record. Yep. And then you've only got a year or two to write your second. But a lot of the second could have been written before the first, and we're saving it. When the third record came out, which is called Dance Undercover, there's a couple of good tunes, but they that was it. They lost it. It was done for them. Um, but this is the peak of Rat. This is the arena Rat. And I think this whole 
there's nothing about the song that I, that I would change or make better. It's one of the best songs from this era. I'm not going to say hair metal because that's demeaning. It's one of the best rock songs mm-hmm. from this era, yeah. for sure. All right. I, too, am giving it a sweet surrender. It's sweet surrender. Hell yeah. What can you say about Lay it down. That hasn't been said before. Oh, yeah. You guys said it all. We're not going to waste any more time with me talking about it. But since Chris is in San Francisco, I figured I would play some Vic Damone singing about Vic San Damone. Francisco. <laughs> Very nice. I love that. Well done. Yeah. So, hey, guess what? Guess where we are? All right, Hammond! I got a question for you. Paul Stanley needs to know if Lay It Down is a rock and roll boner classic. As voted by the four rock and roll boners here with us today. It's got to be unanimous. We know that. We know the rules at this point. So, 1985, huh? Back to the Future was big. Yeah. Pee Wee's Big Adventure was almost as big. It was a damn good year to graduate from high school. I'll just say that. Can I just say one thing, too, about Invasion of Your Privacy? So um, most records of this era went gold. If you had a hit, it was platinum. This record is double platinum, which is huge, huge, huge yeah. uh, in 85. And that's because of this song and You're In Love. So that this was Rat as big, if not bigger, than Motley Crue at this time, which is wow. the point I want to make. Yeah. yeah, you're right. When did Girls, Girls, Girls come out? 87. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to actually check right now and see if Theater of Pain went double platinum. I bet you it didn't. Maybe, well, maybe it now. Did, it, it did have Home Sweet Home on it. That's a good call. The, that's, a gr- that, that's a great call. That could be the, the first power the, ballad. The huge you know? crossover power ballad. That, that's, yeah, that's a good point. That could be that could be the difference maker. Yeah, Which that's good. Be. That's a big one. That's a crossover smash. No doubt about find it. Out? Did, save that album did, if you think about did it. Did Sister of Pain go double platinum? <laughs> I did not. Did not. It should oh, have, fuck. though. Uh, what a great um, song. Uh, that's Sister of Pain is from Vince's first solo record. Yes, yeah. yes it is. Written See, by uh, Tommy Shaw and Jack Blades. Really? I didn't know. Not really? That. Yep. That's when Damn Yankees, and then they, they were hot, and they did the solo record, and then wrote for Vince. Wow. Did uh, not know that. Theater Pain, four times Yeah, flat. because oh. of Home Sweet Home. <laughs> wow. That's all there I, is I to it. Yeah. Holy cow. You bring up, you talk about making playlists. The second we get done with this actually i might even do it while we're recording the rest of the episode i'm adding sister of pain to my favorites playlist on spotify what a great song oh, absolutely that is. and vince sings the shit out of that song the Hell way he yeah. sings the verses are great the that whole first, album is great that that should be a, a future uh submission here that you're right that first album Vince Neil and, record and, exposed is so great. And what a great combo, Vince and Steve Stevens. And they yeah. had a Vicky Fox from Enough's Enough on drums. They had a great band going there. You would never expect that. Like you, you would never expect Steve Stevens to be the guy that Vince took, but it was such a great call. Yeah, it worked out great. great call. It really did, yeah. All right, my vote's in. My vote sure. is in. I mean, yeah, I, was, I got I, it. I mean I can start it off. How about we go me, Nick? Uh, Jericho, Andy. Okay. So Andy's always the uh, the uh, wild, wild card, card in these oh, things because he, he doesn't really like music. <laughs> We've established that, but but we're gonna loop it around Grandma. to him. See yeah. what happens. <laughs> ALG. All right, I'm getting ready to start. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. All right, rock, roll. No, nope, no, nope, nope. you gotta go Four back. Four people. Nick. Four people. And your and name. roll. Boner! And he got it! It's a rock and roll boner! Are you kidding me? Who do you think you are? I am! There's Vince. Vince was hot off of rock and roll junkie fame. Mm hmm. Yes, so there you have it. 
I don't think anybody's going to disagree with that. Like no. we said, 200 songs submitted in uh, two days, and three of them were this song. So That's obviously, great, by the way. Congratulations to you guys. That's a lot of submissions, so that's yeah, good. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I, anybody who's even remotely into this kind of music or just rock in general, I've, I've never heard anybody disparage this song in any way. Everybody when it comes up some it gets played or it gets discussed everybody's like this is fucking awesome as well they should <laughs> yeah because you is. know it's funny when, when when this came out though when i was a kid this was the first single and i thought it's not bad and then you're in love was like i was like oh that's the one because it was faster you know and right. it was more of a fucking yeah uh, uh. now as i grow older i mean you're in love's a great tune but fucking nothing touches lay it down on this record and like i said maybe even in rat's catalog yeah. i think this is better yeah. than round, and the, round. The, the groove of the, the, the this yeah the, the groove is in a slower tempo to me yeah. and that's what this yeah. has they really they really nailed it because in it, the thing with this record too invasion of your privacy if you guys haven't heard in a while it's, it's worth a listen there's another song called Never Use Love, and there's a couple others. But this, those two tunes, You're in Love and Lay It Down, are basically the only two like A-plus level tunes on the record. And okay. that was it. The rest are they have Bs, and there's a yeah, couple yeah. that are maybe B-plus. But that was it. Like The first Out of the Cellar had fucking boom, 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 boom. This one was a little bit not that way, and like I said, then the dance undercover basically had none of those. Yeah, of songs. they they were just you know they they were rushed uh, rushed to market, and just the songwriting yeah. was not there. But you know, they, and they, every every band and every solo guy, even McCartney or whoever, there's a certain well of songs. Yeah, and when you reach that, and some wells are this deep, and some wells are this deep, but when you get there. Like, what's the last great McCartney tune? There's one or two, but this guy wrote fucking like a hundred of the greatest songs of all time. Yeah. And none of them in the last 20 years. Why is that? Yeah. It's interesting how that happens. You know, you get to a certain point, you just hit the fucking wall, man. Yeah. yeah. Flaming Pie is not, uh, <laughs> not in, the, in the pantheon of great. And that was 30 songs. years ago, Chris. There's been like 10 records since. Oh, I then. know. That's just yeah. the this one with the stupidest title <laughs> that I can think pie. of. Flaming Pie. Yeah. There's a reason for that, though. There's a reason for that. Well, you know the reason? You know I the don't know the that? reason. What is okay. the reason? So he had a dream oh boy. Oh, that John Lennon uh, uh, visited him, and they were cooking dinner, and he put a pie in the oven, and it burst into flames. Okay, you and don't... Therefore- you don't write a song about that, <laughs> no. or call a record that either, right? Now, well, if what, it was, if it was, if the song was titled "Yoko Take the Bullet," that'd be fine. Jeez, but <laughs> flaming it wasn't pie. Yoko's fault. She's got a great flow, as you guys know. Yeah, I heard that's her right. Beat. You heard her. But but just to finish my thought, like when you hear, like maybe I think it was twenty years ago or so that Billy Joel said he was not going to write any more songs. And he's just going to play live. Yeah. Like, why would Billy Joel do that? Because Billy probably said, nothing I'm going to write now is going to be as good as that. And I don't have any more ideas. And he, so probably, I'm not gonna fuck he probably wrote some stuff and was like, man, yeah, this, is the best I, this is the best I can do. And it's not even close. Yeah. It's not It's not, It's not. not good. Yeah. It's credit to him for pulling yeah. the plug on himself because people, yeah. the other people just keep forcing it. And it's just like, yeah. now it's over. And you've got, <laughs> you've got this huge catalog of iconic songs. Hey. Why, why bother? Let me give you another great example. Fucking Motley Crue. What's the last great song Nikki Six ever wrote? Because they've put out fucking five or six songs over the years, and they've all been shit. What happened? Mm. Well, those I songs thought, from the dirt, I didn't care for. They're terrible. Yeah. I mean, they still play Saints of Los Angeles, but I don't know if I would say that's a great song. I, I like Saints it's, of Los it's, Angeles. It's good, but, it, but... But Nick, once again, that's 2008, so that's all 15 <laughs> years ago. And they're yeah. they're on a stadium tour. To me, it's like if you're on a stadium tour, wouldn't you want to put out a new song? And the yeah. song they played, the, the Give Me the Dirt, it's, it's, it's good, but it's as good as like Danger yeah. or... Or fight for your right, or fucking you know dancing on glass. Like it's it's not wild side girls, girls, no. girls. Shout of the devil, and it's the same guy writing the tunes. Yeah, you just reach that point, and it's like the well's dry. Yeah, right? yep, you're right. Yeah. Oh well, well if you disagree with us, we're sorry. That's just the fucking way it is. I'm not sorry. You're not. No, not at all. <laughs> no, if someone disagrees with that. No, oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. That's well, a listen, great. That's a great song. Objectively, yeah, well, no, people are paying for it, so they're allowed to disagree. Nick, you got to just deal no, with it. No, can't pay me enough. Oh shit! Wow. 
<laughs> like uh, yeah, the we'll, Snake Sabo and the Skid Row reading of Sebastian. Yeah, Fuck we'll, this we'll, is Nick. We'll, we'll refund their money and kick them out. <laughs> we don't have a problem with that. <laughs> you, there, there's no price. You can't fucking uh, buy the Pot of Thunder cats. I'll tell you that right now. No, apparently not. So it's that time where... Are you out of questions? Well, we have oh. one other thing quickly before oh, that. that's right, yes. We have to pat ourselves on the back because in April, next month... It will officially be 10 years that we've been doing this. So thank you. We've been having listeners send in clips uh, to, uh, I don't know, just give us their thoughts on our 10 years, whatever that may be. So we've got one now from Bob Caruso. Oh, boy. So Bob here- Caruso. Wow. Yep. Here we go. Bob strikes 10. It must be Monday night. A decade of stupidity, but that's all right. Listen to Pound of Thunder tonight Leave us a voice message tonight Hey guys, this is Bob Caruso And I am just want to uh, congratulate you guys On 10 years of Pot of Thunder It's a great, great, great achievement You should be very proud Now if you go another 10 years I might, might, might just send you guys some more Anvil Metal Pounder Union cards. Oh, uh, yes, gun. that's this, right. This I gu- was behind it all. I uh, Googled some Metal Pounder Union card, and wow. I edited out the person's name on it, printed out on Glossy, wrote your names on it, and I got, found the Anvil, uh, <laughs> the Anvil logo, and I also looked up a symbol that they had autographed, and I <laughs> wrote the autographs freehand on the... Uh, <laughs> On the letter. You're telling uh, me. I got to ask. Oh, and the cherry on the top was that I knew, 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 knew you guys would blame it on Tuge. So that was great. Uh, <laughs> now, I got to ask. I sent a follow-up letter on Christmas, around Christmas, and I made it look like a real Anvil newsletter, and I sent a copy to each of you guys. And, you know, I, I found some goofy stuff that the band was into up to and put it in the newsletter to make it look real. And then I mentioned uh, Pot of Thunder and that <laughs> Nick Jones said that he was going to keep that card in his wallet forever. I still have it. And I then I ended it with saying the band had included a glossy that was suitable for framing. And it had a, I found a uh, Photoshop picture of them with Santa Claus hats on. I was just wondering if you ever got that. Where at that point you thought that it was really the band and didn't want to give it more airtime. Um, I'm just curious about that. I had planned on sending a follow up letter for April Fool's Day. Rob, come on. That would have been directly from the band saying that they have a new album coming out and that they included a CD with the song on it and that they want to know if they could be on the show with you guys to oh, preview man. it for the fans. Yes. And then when you clicked on the song on the CD, it was going to give the reveal that, that it was me the whole time. But uh, once you guys didn't uh, put out there the, the newsletter, I figured you were done with it and I didn't bother. So didn't once play. again, congratulations. Love you guys and keep on rocking. Later. Thanks, Bob. Oh, and I want to leave you guys with one last thing. What? February! 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 We don't want it! We don't want it! <laughs> okay. <laughs> First of all, did he call your phone? Do you have do you have an answer machine or something? What is that from? Uh, just a voice recording on the phone. They email us the phone. Yeah, send it to Pot of Thunder at oh, yahoo.com. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you think? Did you know about this, Andy? Um, so, when the second one came, the Christmas one that Bob mentioned, I was I could tell that okay, this is no longer real. I thought we discussed it. Did we discuss? I it? remember there were some lines in it where I thought, okay, I think this is bogus. It was overboard. Of X and X here, yeah, yeah. But the yeah, the card. I still have the card. I'm still saying it's legit. I don't yeah. care. If, I remember when, if I get stopped, if I get stopped at <laughs> yeah. the border and I need to show it, I'm gonna. Yeah, that'll get with, you into Canada with all con- <laughs> with all confidence. I'm gonna be pulling that up. And, and don't forget, for, and first of all, uh, Rod, Rod Carew, what? Bob, Ma- Ma- Bob. Bob Caruso, uh, uh, nobody. And I'll say it again. Nobody is allowed to call me Tuge except for these three gentlemen up here. Ooh. So don't ever fucking call me that again. Or I'll come to your house and knock your fucking teeth down your throat. Wow. There you okay. go. Got it? All right. Okay. Does that Second just go all, for Bob or does that go for everyone? No. He said only us three can. Okay. Agree. All right. It's like only my aunt can call me Christopher. 
That's it. That's no it. one else. Yeah. There's nobody. There's nobody left alive who's allowed I'm to call Chris, me. I'm Chris. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. Okay. I'm the same way. <laughs> there's there's nobody left alive who's who can legitimately call me Christopher anymore. Right, but there was when they were alive. Was it your mom or your aunt or something? Yes, right? exactly. Yeah, my auntie Joan, who's 90 years old, can call me Christopher when she leaves this mortal coil. Well, my cousin Jody calls me Christopher too because she's yeah. So you, that's it. And that's so it. no, so don't ever call me Tuge again. All right. Second of all. What do you think about this Anvil Metal Pounder card? I think it's actually a pretty funny rib. It's it is. Really it is quite it is. good. It's a great it's, job. Yeah, it is very good. I give him. Credit. Other than that, Rod, great job. He had a. He totally had me on the first one because I remember I sent you a message. I'm like, dude, thanks for the Anvil. You guys like, thought it was me, and yeah. I'm like, and I, I'm probably like, oh yeah, like that good, good fake, Chris. I had no fucking idea. Yeah. Well, no, I thought that you were like, as a joke somehow ran into them or communicated with Anvil and was like, send these guys some cards. Or and I was like, wow, that's it's weird, but because I think we just talked about Anvil with you. We always talk well, about well, it. Yeah, show. yeah, on the show. And Robert then like a week that. later, it came in the mail. So I'm like, oh, okay. So, and once again, this was literally given to me by Rob Reiner with two Bs. Yep. Good day, man. You're, you're, you're in the Anvil Metal Pounders <laughs> Union. Man. You can use your membership card. And like gave it to, at the whiskey. Super serious. Yeah. And this is when I was driving down Sunset. I was there doing whatever the fuck, working or whatever. And I say, tonight, Anvil. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I'm going to go. And he literally gave me this Anvil Metal Pounders Union card like he was giving me the key to the fucking city. Like, this is for you. It was. Like, hey, man, come here. <laughs> like, you better You're take care of this. Metal Pounders Union yeah. card. <laughs> it's like awesome. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, man. Like fucking a, whatever. Like, yeah. What do cool. I get? What, so what does it come gone? with? <laughs> yeah. So that was good. Good job from Rod Carew on his um, <laughs> rib on the you guys. Yeah, yeah. And what a hitter he was too. One of the great hitters in Major League Baseball. And Jewish, history. if I'm not mistaken. That, yeah, he was a baseball he player. That's where I knew the name from, Rod Carew. Yeah, Minnesota Twins. Minnesota great. Twins. And, and, yeah. I believe he did convert to Judaism. I, yeah, I think so. Him, well, and, like, him and Sammy Davis from, Jr. Because of some chick. Oh, is that what and it was? Walter, and Walter Sobchak from uh, Big Lebowski converted to Judaism for a chick. Yeah, oh. that's true. <laughs> Show her Shabbat! <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Bob. We made a song just for that guy? We did a while ago because he was oh. giving us such a hard time. Oh, so, so he's a regular. Yeah, he's a regular who oh. likes to bust our chops about our uh, February month. I'm not a he, fan either. Yeah. yeah. Plus, uh, that makes plus, two of you. Plus, he's from he's from <laughs> he's from Philadelphia. There's there's subhumans in that town. <laughs> Psychopaths, man. <laughs> Bill Burr sitting next to me over here. Yeah, just lighten Which, up. By the Philadelphia. way, with the name of the last great Skid Row record, Subhuman Race. See, so there you go. They must have recorded it in Philly with Bo Hill. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Are you guys ready for a Yardo question? Do you have time? Hell yes. <laughs> well, I, got, I got nothing else going on. Fuck, man. This is like my night. So Plus he's on the he's on the West Coast. So. Yeah, I'm on the oh, West Coast. Right. So I'm, I have this is when I always call you guys. I have a day off on the road, mm -hmm. and so my instant reaction is, "What are those three fucking schlubs doing? <laughs> Fuck, are you guys doing Pot of Thunder tonight or whatever it is?" And you guys usually are. So yep. it, it, thank you so much for making my night uh, much more exciting. Absolutely. We're happy to have you. You know that. And let's get to it. I don't get yards of questions. Motherfucker, I give them. Sing away. So aggressive. Yes. Chief. He's probably from Philly. <laughs> it's Rod Carew, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Could be Rod Carew. Could be Rod Carew. What was Rod Carew? 70s? Yeah, yeah, 60s, 70s, He's Minnesota. Started, Minnesota I had a very short window of collecting baseball cards, and he was one of my biggest cards. So 78 or so he was playing. Okay. Minnesota Twins, so I'm sure he spent a lot of time at First Avenue. Mm. Yeah. Fucking great place. Probably man. Sean Hopper's favorite baseball player, if you <laughs> think about it. Him and Sean Hopper used to do lewds and bang chicks in the bathroom at First Avenue back in those days. <laughs> All right, I'm looking for a good one for us here. <laughs> you ain't no looker either, sister. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's great. You gotta love it. Oh, uh, fucking Huey will be forever. Yet another reason to worship Huey Lewis. Yeah, exactly. 
two thumbs up for life for Huey Lewis. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Unassailable, basically. (laughs) Unassailable. It's true. Nick, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, and, touch and, that guy. and that reminded me of, uh, I think I told this before on the show, I'll tell it real quick again, when I went to see him the one time, um, people had their cell phones out, of course, and some lady was holding the phone up to him, and he, and in between songs, he's like, what do you, what do you want, what is this? And it was, uh, oh, I've got my husband on the phone, can you sing happy birthday to him? During the concert? Yeah. Not like well, at a meet, but it was meet like, and greet or something? No, it was like, it was like in between songs, and he acknowledged it. Oh, and, but during the concert. Yeah. And so... He grabs the phone, the guy's on there, and he just he closes the phone, effectively ending the call. He goes, I'm a professional. I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm a professional. He's, he's one of those guys I wish could still tour because you could go to that show and you would know every song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like you it was could great, take your man. wife and your friends and have a couple drinks before and just be, just be like nonstop hits, right? Yeah. Oh, and, and that's per- what it was. Performed impeccably. Was oh, yeah. Top so, 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 so check this out. This is kind of similar. So um, one of my jackets is in the Hard Rock. Saw uh, that. Video, Tampa. Congrats. Very cool. And thank you. Thank you. And th- that's great. Whatever. Pat myself up. But the reason why we did it that day is because Rod Stewart was playing at the Hard Rock Tampa. Now, Tampa is a very small venue. When I say it's small, the place that you guys came and saw us that was like an Italian village. Yeah. In Fort Wayne. Was no. Big. In was Joliet? that Toronto. No, Where it was, was it? Uh, it was Aurora, the Aurora. Chicago suburb. Yeah, that Aurora. place is bigger than the Hard Rock Hotel. It holds fourteen hundred people. Rod Stewart came on stage and he was like, "Whose wedding is this?" Really? <laughs> <laughs> it was the smallest fucking gig, but obviously it's a big money gig for Rod. The Hard Rock doesn't care about. 1400 people they want the, the, the name value and people come gamble and the hard rock's the place to be right so they'll meet whatever the asking price whatever is it to, is yeah because yeah. it's about it's about the the, the perception yeah sure, and, he, yeah. and at first i could tell because i was i was right up front when he walked on stage he was like what the fuck am i doing here <laughs> and then once he started playing he was like this is like the marquee in london like i'm having the best time because when does he ever have a chance to play a small room yeah point is he was so great because you know every fucking song yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stewart. like there's so many songs just throwing them out there and you're fucking loving it and Huey Lewis could have the same same thing totally he just love seeing him so yeah I don't know I guess he probably can't tour anymore it's but. an unfortunate situation yeah it's, it seems like some of the some of the greats are going down because of hearing loss it's true right yeah, and the thing I mean, is you know Brian like, Setzer I don't know if he's gonna play anymore you know, Brian Johnson couldn't sing with yeah. ACBC because, but now he apparently has issue uh, has been able to fix that. But Angus is still COVID scared, so we don't know if we'll ever see ACDC again. Oh, is that? But you yeah. know, yeah. Hmm. I know a guy that works for ACDC, and he's ahead like, hey, taking another gig because he said Angus has no plans of touring anytime soon. So time to go. Still, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Maybe Axl Rose could join Huey Lewis in the news. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> Oh, this is so great. The last Huey Lewis gig was November 24th, 2017. That might wow. be the end of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. But they didn't, did weather come out after that or no? I think somehow they were able to pull off that yeah. album. Yeah. But weather I, was I, 2020. I, so I, right I think he was saying how he just, he can't, um, he can't pick the melody out when he hears the music anymore. Yeah. He just, he, it, it's not, uh, it, it's not coming through clearly. Yeah, maybe is, he could get sad. the thing. That's apparently, like Brian Johnson had some kind of a new technology they could put in his ear. Maybe Huey can do that and be able to sing better. Get back on the road. Yeah. I think that's the problem with Bon Jovi nowadays. If you guys have heard any of his stuff, oh, it's terrible. I don't you think can't. he can hear. I think I think his fucking hearing is Some, fucked. And something's like, not right because it's not is, right. It is yeah. awful. Yeah, but I, I think it's because I, I think is he can't hear anything. Honestly, and, you, and it's like, that's that's it's really the only explanation for how bad it is because and, and it's just, the emperor emperor has no clothes like someone has to tell him like, yeah you would think terrible. but or yeah or he has to like watch a youtube clip or read an article like he has to know yeah. this isn't good as a singer you know like fuck yeah like i'm not nailing it man this he, sucks he has to know but then he's he's seeing the checks and he's going out on stage and seeing those full arenas and it's like it's, and you're right and most people don't care but we know but i'm sure when you go to the gig you're singing along 
The chicks are singing right. along. They don't fucking care. They're just watching Bon Jovi right, jumping right, right, right. and doing well, yeah. Sam Bora's coming back in some capacity, isn't he? Is he? he? I, yeah, I, I, there's, I thought they were in talks. That's the word on the street. Yeah. That's I didn't know that. I hadn't heard that yet. Yeah. That's cool. All right, so we got a Yardo questions from Corey Morissette. Who, who, by the way, runs the, uh, uh, and the podcast will rock, Van Halen podcast done pot style, where they do random Van Halen songs each episode. Mm. Definitely worth checking out. Good to what that, what'd you say? <laughs> What's that? What did you just say? Uh, the guy... <laughs> What? <laughs> looks like you're the. It looks like being hard of hearing is going around. Uh, I, I, I get yelled at by my kids and my wife all the time. Apparently, I'm hard of hearing. So yeah. hard. me no, too. Understand. Every you gotta, day, you, got, man. you guys mumble. All oh, you guys mumble. <laughs> so there's a there's a there's a pod of thunder esque show that does Van Halen. Yep, called the uh, and the podcast will rock. And uh, wow. they're, they're about sixty were... episodes in, and uh, they do it the same way we did, just random polls of from all eras, and it's it's a good show. You should check it out. If you remember when you, you guys were coming to the end of the Kiss era of Pot of Thunder, you were trying to think of what to do, and one of the suggestions was, from what I recall, was a random Van Halen one. It right? was a conversation. That yeah. Was, bah, bah, yeah, yeah. Motley Crue was the other band. And Scorpions that, uh, were was, brought up. Scorpions, I remember Scorpions too. Considered, so... But yeah, no, that's who Corey. Corey's one of the ho- co-hosts, also from up in Canada. I don't think Winnipeg. I c- can't remember where he's from, but hmm. he's a fellow Canuck. All right. Well, question one: What '80s sitcom would you like to see rebooted with some or all of the original cast? <clears throat> Hmm. Let's let's turn I, it to Nick and say. I th- what, well, I think I mentioned. Oh, go sorry. Go I was ahead. gonna say, Night Court is back. Well, which and, Nick was a huge Night Court fan, and I think I mentioned it already on here. But I I like what they're doing with it so far. It I I'm I'm still on board with the the Night Court reboot. They've so been watching. Have, yeah, really, because it's just John Larroquette, right? Yeah, yeah, and it. But it's his character is is obviously it's the most interesting because what 30 years have elapsed so at least seeing how he was a total scumbag in the original and how he is now there's still traces of that character but you could tell it's just interesting it's it's Mm. it's a person who's grown and experienced you know a lot of life uh, between the two series and Mm. and the other and really the other characters i like them like the newer characters i i have no issues with them I, i i'm liking what they're doing with it so far they could ruin it at any moment. Who but knows? That's cool. But. You're watching. To me, it's a hard sell for me because, like, certain moments in time, like those shows, are moments in time, right? So to bring them back is is hard for me because, okay, Night Court is that amazing ensemble cast. Mm-hmm. But for me, if, if you want to go that direction, it started in the '70s but went to the '80s. I would like to see a Love Boat or a Fantasy Island reboot. Mm. You three and one. All you need are one or two great fucking anchor cast members, and then you could have the cavalcade of guest stars, which ranged from huge to C C minus <laughs> level. Like me, like I could be on the fucking Love Boat. It'd be amazing. Yeah, so you you and back. you and Jamie Farr could be on the same episode. Fucking Bar- Barbie, ben- whoever the Barbie Benton of our generation is. Yeah, Who that exactly. Fucking, I don't know what's the broad's name that was on uh, Party of Five. The <laughs> Jennifer chick. Love Hewitt. Jennifer Love Hewitt. Me and Jennifer Love Hewitt, Hewitt go on the cruise together and fucking fall in love, and then that's it. And the next week, someone else comes on the cruise or a fantasy island. Like Peter Dinklage's tattoo, you know. That could work. Fucking, uh, the guy from Seinfeld, who is Elaine's boss, is Mr. Roy. <laughs> yeah. I show up. Peterman. Yeah. Peterman. I thought they I rebooted up. Fantasy Island. Did they? Well, they they made they it did. as a horror movie. Oh, Chris. fuck that. No. Oh, yeah, they no. made it as a horror movie. You show up and you fucking your worst fantasies Run, come true. That's, 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 don't, 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 don't fuck around with the formula. Yeah, like I want to show up and, and fucking, you know, uh, become a famous archer and Lady Gaga is also on the mean Lady Gaga make out and at the end of the show we go on a date like fuck there's a, there's a show it's done yeah call yeah. up fucking NBC or, or Hulu and let's yeah. get it done man. enough of, enough of all this 
dark uh, subject matter, no. especially rebooting 80s stuff, you know. You know, fucking, I show up on Fantasy Island, I tell Peter, man, I want to be the bass player of a famous heavy metal band. Fucking Rob Reiner and Lips are there. <laughs> and, and fucking 666 and you- Anvil Metal Pounder Union Cars. End of show. <laughs> I just thought of one. Uh huh. <laughs> well, you said one already. Well, Andy asked oh, me about I, the night court. Yeah, that was one. me just prompting. On behalf of the Jones brothers, he can do two. He can have it. As we <laughs> yeah, say, I Nick have can it. have it. And I'm also going to go off the question a little bit because they said a sitcom. See, he's he's doing what they did to Fantasy Island. He's going off script, a little playing bit. games. I'm going. I'm going to go with the show that was not a sitcom, but I think would work with. Uh, and I don't know if both cast members, main cast members, are still around. I think um, Remington Steel would work mm. with the with uh, the same two lead cast members, and Doris Roberts is not around anymore, so she's not going to be in it. But I don't know she if she was guys... on Remington Steel. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, she was like the I don't know office help. Yeah, I hope something. it wasn't his love interest. No, <laughs> <laughs> that would have sucked. So no, but that's a it was a good show. You don't really hear that much about it anymore. She actually I think it would work. she played the woman who accosted Huey Lewis at a uh, Australian <laughs> airport bar. The, the, the bar fly in LAX yeah, yeah, who uh, she, who's not a, not a looker. So. <laughs> Sister, who, who was the second lead in that show? I forget the I forget the actress's name, okay. but ultimately the show was she's the brains behind it, but because she's a woman, mm. she has to hire a man to be the face of it of the like the. Detective uh, Serano, uh, sort of de- whatever, sort of, a sort of a Serano de Bergerac sort there of uh, situation, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it is a good show, I remember. Okay, all right, Chris all right. L. All right, well, in the spirit of uh, weird kids that we uh, <laughs> experienced on the video, I would like to see a reboot of Small Wonder at uh, that <laughs> fucking bizarre show with the robot girl, yeah, of Vicky. Course. Yeah, really strange. But that that show ran from '85 to '89. There you go. Pretty that, much my entire college career. But that, what a weird premise. Yeah, what and, a weird premise, right? Yeah. And and the and the the girl who played the robot was as weird as the Stephen Piercy kid. Yes, yeah, she was. Totally bizarre. Out and out of out of nowhere that show came. So I'd like to see it come back with you know fully adult Vicky. What she's up to. Okay, with her being one of the cast well, members, she she's still be, in it. Yeah. yeah, assuming she's still alive, but who knows? Yeah, I'd like to um, uh, bring back the Tonight Show, uh, Chris Jericho Tonight Show, with my special fucking uh, co-host Wit Hertford <laughs> <laughs> to stare at your guests while you're talking to them, <laughs> <laughs> scare everyone. <laughs> it's, it, it just, you just it's, like this. Yeah, and it's sit there <laughs> masturbating at random when you're trying to conduct an interview. <laughs> you know, when I was in the rat video, uh, they forced me to have sex with a six-year-old. So, how are you? All right, Wit. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Anyway, <laughs> back to David Hyde Pierce on the couch over here. <laughs> in the Fraser reboot. Yeah, he's not going to be in it. Although actually, is a free, isn't this like the fifth Fraser reboot? They've been talking about it for years. No uh, one is in it. Fraser. Everyone has declined to be in it except for Kelsey Grammer. Well, that could be. Say it again. What happened? That everybody, could be good. Like, everybody else who was in it. Well, first of all, his the guy who played his dad passed away. Yeah, but, we know that. But the. Um, <laughs> Okay, I said. Well, I said. I said everybody who was in it declined. So I had to say, well, okay, one guy is not alive, but everyone else who was in the main cast, they declined, except okay. for of course Kelsey Grammer. Okay, but let me throw this at you. Mm-hmm. A great fucking story uh, from Bring on the Night, the Sting documentary when he left the police. Mm-hmm. Miles Copeland is Sting's manager, Stewart's brother. Yeah. And Branford Marcellus is is in the band, and mm-hmm. he's the sax player. Okay. Mm-hmm. And he wants more money. And Miles Copeland goes, this always fucking happens. Because when there's more money on the table, everyone wants more money. But guess what? It stings fucking table. There is no money. If we go to Madison Square Garden and Brantford Marcellus doesn't show up, how many refunds do I got to give? Zero. <laughs> if Sting doesn't show up, how many refunds do I got to give? 20,000 refunds. Same thing with Fraser. If the fucking British chick isn't on the show because she refuses, who gives a shit? All right. If you got Fraser... 
It's called Frasier. Well, you're dealing with a couple Frasier purists here in the Jones <laughs> Brothers, so they're, they're not the they're podcast. not they're not going to see they're not they're not going to listen to reason. So you're just wasting your breath. But yeah, Nick just said he likes the new Night Court with one original cast yeah. member who wasn't even the main character. Harry Morgan was the main character, right? Harry uh, Stone or Harry, Harry Anderson. Harry Anderson. Anderson. Well, Harry Morgan was, uh, was Mash. Colonel Potter on Mash. Yeah, yeah. and then put uh, Colonel Potter in the Fraser remake, and you got a fucking deal. There you go. Yeah. Well, hey, it might horse work. hockey. Yeah, <laughs> Buffalo <laughs> Bagels. Well, yeah. that was his big insult. Horse hockey. Yeah. While, yeah. while we're on the subject, I'm kind of sick of reboots coming back, and then there being like it's a limited run of ten episodes instead of it just coming back for real. Nothing comes back. Everything's just a limited run. Yeah, that's just how it is with streaming. It's all horseshit. It's like, it's like when you see collector's edition on a package of fucking cupcakes. I mean, come <laughs> on. He's <laughs> playing fast and loose with all this. Like, you know, oh, it's running out soon. You better yeah. consume it. Fuck you. Just don't buy. Just go. here. Here's a, here's an idea. Come up with something original. Never gonna happen. No, it, that it's ridiculous. Exactly. It's over. And were they doing Quantum Leap? That's another one that would. Be oh, great. I think that oh, was stop. like a Chinese guy or something, right? Yeah. I I didn't see it, but Bef- before we're done, Nick's gonna be name great. every television program from the '80s, whether it was a comedy or not. Quantum Leap. Who cares? Quantum Leap so we're with not a, with, a, with a Japanese guy. I think. Okay. I'm not even kidding. It's like uh, I'll I'll find it right now. You didn't like you know, Quantum Leap, Chris? Well, why are What's we? That? What are we? Are we going to name every fucking show that was on in the eighties? Oh, well, we're saying Let's, everyone that's come back as a reboot as the. But we can, yeah, no, we can no, also I'm, I'm stop the discussion <laughs> and move could. on to the next question. But hold on, I'm telling you, this is a shoot. Uh, Quantum Leap reboot starring Raymond Lee. There you go. Uh, he's a, he's a, he's not he's he's a New Yorker, but he's obviously of Asian descent. And he's the new star of Quantum Leap, Raymond Lee. We get your boy Ken Jeong from the fucking Mass Singer to do it. Dude, when I saw him backstage in in, uh, L.A., he flipped out. Really? He's such a huge Jericho fan. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. He's a good guy. Did he jump on you naked like he did uh, in uh, Bradley Cooper in The Hangover? What does he say? I fuck you! Yeah. Or or was that uh, Big Lebowski? No. Whatever. I fuck, I stick balls in mouth, or whatever he said, yeah. Yeah. I missed that one. <laughs> Hit me with fucking crowbars. His balls were bang- banging off my fucking uh, neck yeah. back here. Wow. Yeah. That happens. Yeah. Forever. This is shit, man. Yeah. Question two. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Similar vein here. What 80s comedy would you like to see be remade? So now I we're in the we movies. Just answer that well, one. We did sitcom. Now we have to say movie. Oh, movie. This is by the same guy? Yeah. yeah. Get some originality, man. <laughs> he he what, remade what you, his first ex- question. <laughs> what do you expect? He's from Canada, for Christ's sake. Uh, he's not from fucking Winnipeg, I'll tell you that. Yeah. He's from Toronto, which is the worst. <laughs> so what we, what's the question? Of what 80s, 80s movie? movie. Want to make? 80s comedy 80s movie. 80s comedy movie? Comedy. Hey, but we could make our own rules if you just want to pick up. Yeah, that's movie. true. How about Quantum Leap? That would be good. <laughs> Was that a movie? <laughs> Could we make Quantum Leap with an Asian um, lead, please? Um, here's the thing, though. Once again, remaking comedies from the 80s are very hard because the best 80s comedies are very 80s-centric. Okay? Right. So, for example, Back to School, there was rumors they were going to remake it with Cedric. Oh, yes, yeah, please don't I remember do that. that. No. Well, that was years and years ago, yeah. They remade Can't Buy Me Love, which is one of the all-time great 80s movies. With It, it was stupid. It was like it didn't make any yeah. sense because those movies exist in the time frame of the 80s yeah. so it's hard to say it, like we make it it's not the same yeah it's 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 sacrilege really i really? I, I was never i never knew that that was even a, a, in consideration to have it was cedric it really was. the entertainer as thornton Mellon. well he was it, uh he was ralph cramden Right? When yeah, in the honeymoon. I think it's uh, I think it's, do that, right? I think it's worse to have him as Thornton Mellon, to be honest I, with you. I, I would assume, Chris L, and you can tell me if I'm wrong about this or what you guys think too. I would assume that they wrote that movie specifically for Rodney Dangerfield. I would think oh, so. Oh fuck yeah. Yeah. I don't think they said, Hey Rodney, we got a script for you, we think you like I think they said we need a fucking project for Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah. Get us something. Mm-hmm. And they wrote that because it's 
to think of anybody else playing that part, like, I'm sure you could do it, but why? It's perfect for him. But that doesn't stop these people from ruining uh, 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 iconic classics like that. Cedric the Entertainer? Come on. (laughs) Well, that, you know what's, you know what's worse than that? Um, there, Lee. there was talk okay. of uh, there was talk of um, a Naked Gun reboot years ago yeah, with right. Ed, with Ed Helms as the star. Okay, I I, I can't be on board with that. No, no. Ed, 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 Ed Helms seems like a should, nice guy, he but he shouldn't I, be I, on board with it. He should be like, you know what, I'm not doing. This. But here, here's an here's an example of that too. Like if you guys saw the um, Vacation reboot, yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, is an excellent movie. It's hilarious. Ed Helms is great. Christina Applegate is great. They end up meeting with Chevy and Beverly and Angelo. They, sh- if they would have called it like you know, the Anderson family's wacky summer, like it would like, I think it was hurt by the fact that it was called Vacation because mm. most people are like I don't want to see it. Yeah. It's a great movie. Mm. I think if it would have had a different identity, it would have been much more, uh, you know, of a bigger movie. So why would you want to remake something from the 80s that's not going to really stand a chance because you can't recap? It's like, here's a perfect example for, uh, who, what's the guy's name that is asking this question? Corey. Corey. So you, you guys might not be into Japanese horror movies, but in the, in the 2000s and 2010s, there was J-horror. It was a whole genre of movies, and that was The Ring. Oh yeah, okay. And the, and the Grudge were the two biggest ones. When they remade The Ring for the states, people loved it. It sucks. Mm. And I'll tell you the reason why. J horror is fucking creepy because it's Japanese. They make it a certain way. They film it a certain way. The dialogue is weird. The fucking acting is is off kilter because it's not American. When they changed it to America, it just becomes a fucking horror movie. Mm. All of the creepiness that makes it unique is gone. Yeah. And I think it's the same for an 80s comedy that you would want to remake. It's gone because we're not in the 80s. We're 40 years later. Yeah. You know, we're gonna let's do Ferris Bueller with uh, I don't know whoever the fucking hot Zach Afron or whatever. I know he's forty now, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. But okay. it's, it's not the '80s. So what are you gonna do? Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I've got to agree. I, I don't even think I could come up with an answer. I mean, the TV show is one thing, but these movies should not. Don't touch the movies. I, I, I'm not a fan of that. But, 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 uh, what's his name again? Colin. Chris? Corey. Corey, here's a great example Rod. Of, of how Rod Carew of how you can make it work. Have you guys ever watched Cobra Kai? Yeah, no, that's good. That's, yeah, that's a good well, point. It's great because they take the original characters, Ralph Macchio and Billy Zapka and those guys, but they add a whole new generation of their kids. Mm-hmm. So it works because you got the characters we know and a whole bunch of brand new, interesting people that most of the show is built around. So combine the two generations and you got something. And like, so, go ahead, Andy. I was saying, like you said, they called it Cobra Kai instead of Karate Kid Part right. Five or whatever. Like you, you get what it's from, but they're not using the exact right. title. No, just not to cop out on, on Colin's question. I will say we're going to do a Forrest, oh, sorry, Forrest Gump, no, for, a, for, a Ferris Bueller uh, reboot, and it's going to be called Mr. Rooney. Okay. And it's about Mr. Rooney and Forrest Bueller. And they're fucking kids. Okay. Wait a minute. You got to be careful. When you say Mr. Rooney and fucking kids, you got to... Uh, <laughs> now we're getting back into Whit oh, Hurtford. Boy. Yeah, Curry. careful what we're saying here, what they're doing, what kind of film we're putting out. Because <laughs> he, Jeffrey Jones had some issues. He and sure I know did. it's Ferris Bueller, by the way. I just like saying Forrest Bueller. Forrest Bueller. All right, so that's it, huh? Did you have one, Nick? <clears throat> um... So, no, it'd be, more, it'd be more of a sequel. Okay. But um, I think uh, Spaceballs 2, The Search for More Money, could happen, even though John Candy and Joan Rivers aren't with us any longer. But, I mean, goodness knows there's enough Star Wars stuff to lampoon again. Was that uh, was that something that was... Was it ever called The Search for More Money? It's in the first... Well, you know, Mel Brooks had History of the yeah. World Part 1, and obviously yeah. there was never a Part 2. Yeah, right. they, they had... well. I think uh, the yogurt character, right, toward the end said, well, I'll meet again in Spaceballs 2, the search for more money. And I think even in the end credits, it says something about that. That's a good call. I would go for that. 
I don't know how it would be. Much more See, now that's like, that's creative thinking on Nick's part. So that's, that's what Nick good. brings to the table, man. Yeah, he he's does. much. He's on a higher yeah. plane than the rest of us. Creative <laughs> thinking and incessant references to quantum <laughs> leap. <laughs> You don't like Dean Stockwell? I, I don't know. It had nothing to What's do with What's the problem with Dean Stockwell? Zero. I like John Stockwell from Christine. That was pretty good. Zero. Okay. Um, I, I agree with you, Nick. That's a great idea. And like you said, there's six more movies to Lampoon now. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. It's ripe for the... And there's the, the Mandalorian movie. series that could be Lampooned. Fucking Obi-Wan. I mean, uh, that's... Jar Jar Banks. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a movie right there. And what... I've got one. History of the World what? is... Coming out, yeah, right? that, with that, was that, 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 what's that? He, the guy, he was a DJ Blu ray and he spawned him down, Isaac, or whatever that guy's name is. Okay. And he won Celebrity Jeopardy or whatever, but yeah, he's he, he, he worked on it with Mel Brooks. That's coming out. What, what's that? Another History, it's, of, the history yeah. of the World Part yeah. 2. Oh, I've right? been seeing commercials for it, yeah. Yeah. Mel Brooks is still alive, right? Yeah, yes, he's he in is. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. I, I would do that. Like forty years later, you know, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Did you guys ever see History of the World? I never saw it. Yeah, right. Gregory Hines. I didn't see it. Is it good? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Madeline Kahn's great in it. I, I, I had a joy to see History of the World or uh, Amazon Women on the Moon, and I went for that one. So. Well, that's <laughs> that's uh, that. See it's, now, now you know. Thinking what would be the next logical move from Amazon Women on the Moon? That would be a good thing to reboot How about that this, type Chris? of movie. But Amazon Women on the on the Tune, T W O N. That's the name of the movie. Amazon <laughs> Women on the Tune. <laughs> yeah. How and about How nice. about Earth Girls Are Easy, starring us? Okay. Us, us four? <laughs> Why not? Why not? I mean, Wait, I mean, who's going to be Jeff Goldblum? Andy, probably. I guess. Andy. I could pull yeah, it off. Yeah, Andy's kind of more, he's the more organized one. <laughs> I, have like a I, I want to be Damon Wayans. Jeff have, Goldblum seems very organized. Yeah, yeah. I have a choice, and I will, it will be quick. I just, uh, there's a very quick rationale for it. I would like to see a reboot of Soul Man, because the world <laughs> needs another good blackface <laughs> movie at this point. <laughs> So who would be in it though? Who's uh, it's, it's 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 Soul Man two canceled. Yeah, basically. Yeah, no kidding. Who who would hey, who would be in it though? Because see Thomas Howell, man, he's not doing anything right now. That's true. Yeah, and have his kid, his kids uh, want to do a minstrel show for the talent show in <laughs> third grade, <laughs> and hilarity it, 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 It's Soul Man starring his son. D. Thomas Howell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, Perfect. see, this is this is the creative kind of creative thinking you don't get from Hollywood. You don't. You don't get, get you're it. not going to get this on the uh, the podcast. Will rock. I'll tell you that. Wow. Well, 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 shots fired. Off our ideas. Take it easy on your fellow <laughs> countrymen, Tooge. <laughs> That's great, man. So, so the Colin's got a couple of answers. We yep. did not cop out. Okay. Now, if the third one is what '80s album would you want to remake? Yeah, what's the, the third off, question? I'm off the show. <laughs> Andy's got to <laughs> rework. Okay, Andy's third one. Improvise here. Which '80s band would you like to see reunite for a tour? For fuck's sakes, Colin, get out of the fucking '80s. <laughs> Told you. Yeah, these are qu these are questions for your boy Rich Ward, Mister Eighties. Yeah, well, he would probably say like "Aha" or like uh, uh, "Fucking Mister Mister" or something like that. He would. He would definitely um, say those things. And there's nothing wrong with it. No, I, mean, I agree. I agree. The, the Guardians of the Jukebox stole the show on the Jericho Cruise. Yeah. Oh, they steal the show. I hate to tell you this, but they stole the show at your party too. The I mean, I fucking I, I, I fucking ran. <laughs> I ran across your property like a fucking like like after uh, after defouling my powder room. You no, this is before, but like oh. I was like Usain Bolt when I heard uh, Caribbean Queen start. <laughs> I just fucking. I know. I listened to the episode. Shot all the way across your entire property. Shot across the lake, if you will. Oh, oh, shot God. across the property like Andy Jones staring at the chicks with his Billy Squire costume with no wig. That's yeah. That picture is unfortunate. <laughs> That's one of those I, ones where Andy's in the background. He just take a picture and then you zoom in a little bit more and zoom in a little bit more. And there's Andy's face, but 
I was watching the bands. They got in front of me and started taking pictures. Oh, is that what you were watching? I think they wanted a pot of thunder. Can- <laughs> Flag on the play. Yeah. <laughs> I think they wanted a pot of thunder uh, host in their picture. You know how you do that sometimes? You'll walk in front of someone and be like, yeah, let's take a picture here and we'll get uh, Huey That's Lewis in the background, picture. right? That's why I got a picture of Bruce Springsteen. Is it really? You did that? I said, Bruce, he turned around, I took a selfie, and we have a great picture together. <laughs> and that was it. There I'm, you go. I'm not even kidding. It's true. Hey, it what? worked. Okay, 80s band, 80s. 80s. That you would want to reunite. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, you could say you want the original rat lineup. That might not be your answer, as, as but my, I'm saying... The, can can it be a, can about. there be a deceased member brought back to life? Yes. In that case, I'm. I'm, I'm Why not? Yeah. Happening. All right. What do you got? So the deceased member can be brought back. Sure. To yeah. Life. Me. It's weird because most <laughs> '80s bands are still together. Like I yeah. would think, like like of all bands, we can let's expand it. Like mm-hmm. I think before they die, I would love to see. And that's never going to happen. I'm not even a, a giant fan. I think it'd be really cool to have a Pink Floyd concert mm. with Roger Waters and fucking uh, David Gilmour, right? I mean, come on, really? You know? Sure. That, I think that would be good. Uh, a, How I long has it been since those guys have done something together on stage? 40 fucking years. It's yeah. 82, right? They hate each other. They're still, they, they, they still argue. Oh, they hate each other. And, and uh, What about Oasis? That'd be a good one. But they're That's not. Stadium, they're not 80s. It's a stadium tour. They're what? not 80s. Well, he said we're expanding. I, 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 I already said we're expanding. Oh, the 80s, 80s is out. All the 80s bands are together again. They name I'm, one 80s band that's not together. Like, it's harder I'm, to name something. Yeah. I've got maybe the dumbest, least uh, climactic answer. Perfect. What? <laughs> you love it. Motley Crue. <laughs> I want, I want Mick back. <laughs> Already? Oh, Already? <laughs> yeah. What do they had? Three oh, shows God, with buddy. John Five? <laughs> Mick wants him out. Three shows in. No, that was just, I just thought that'd be the dumbest possible answer. But you're right. Like, what are you going to say? I want a Laws Rocket reunion. Like, like, the, yeah, fuck, I mean, like, like all the 80s bands are still playing. Yeah. Do you want Ingve back with Alcatraz or something yeah, like you that? Yeah, if you, you know, have something like, crazy like that. I guess. Or the yeah. or the old DLR band or something like that with Vi. Okay, there you go. Boom. Ring the bell. Nick nailed it. You fucking nailed it. I want to see the Eat Him and Smile. There you David go. David Lee Roth now band. Now we're on to something. Billy They're... Jean, Steve Vai, Greg Bissett. They're all alive. They're all alive. They're all still playing and, great. Yeah. Roth is off his rocker, but who gives a shit? But he's, you know he's still active. I, I don't know. What is what he is up to? to? He keeps recording he, remakes of... He just put out uh, um, Unchained. Yeah. He just put out a version of Unchained the other day. Yeah. They're fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but he's still active. <laughs> he's still active. Yes. Matt, you, you, boom, nailed it. Nick. He might even he's still alive. remember some Spanish. <laughs> the sonrisa salvaje. Tomato, 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 tomato. <laughs> Tomato, tomato, sempre tomato. Wow. Um, yeah, I don't think I we're going to top idea. that one. I mean, that one just makes the most sense. I would fucking, I would go on a road trip anywhere in continental North America to see that gig. So that's the one I would choose. Did we actually exhaust the fucking... Yeah, we did. We did. I don't know if that's ever happened. Half what? an hour, and, right? Yeah. And we what, what do we do? The uh, background music that we have playing. <laughs> <laughs> I have it like way longer than it needs to be. This I think might it's, be our longest show ever. Yeah, I think you probably shut the recording off an no. hour ago. It's just for us. And since we mentioned Ingve, I want to say I'd love to hear Joe Lynn Turner singing with him again. Crystal ball. Love it. That's great. So. Okay, let's get let's think about it then. Okay, let's get fucking deep into this, man. Like uh that's a good call. Mm-hmm. Um Here's another question, like, if we're going, so let's say we're sticking to whatever decade, 80s, are we, uh, do we have to put any kind of, like, we need them to be in this physical condition? No, it's, it, it's, or does it's it have to be right time. now? Well, we, we can, we've, we've decided we can resurrect dead people. <laughs> oh, that's true. Sure. Whatever that's we true. want. I've got one. Okay. Uh, if we can resurrect dead people or even not, I would love to see the Kiss fucking non-makeup lineup play a song, uh, play a, a gig. And that if we're resurrecting Eric Carr, that's great. Or you can just have Eric Singer. I know it was 92, but give me a couple of years here. I would love to see the Kiss Revenge lineup together again to play a show. That would be cool. You know, it's 92, but give me a couple of years, Colin, you fucking asshole. I think, I, I think, <laughs> I think after all my tenure on this show, I'm allowed that. Yeah, you, you're allowed it. Kiss Revenge lineup. <laughs> I would love to see that again. Uh, I would go anywhere to see that. 
Did you? And it's just Paul. Or? It's just Paul's vocal ability from that era. Well, well, yeah, he ain't singing my way. Let's put it that way. That's that one's not going to be in the set. I, I know, but let me give me the Alive Three set list, and I'm fine. Yeah. I love it. No, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Did you answer already? Nick? I said a couple already. Yeah. He said the Eat 'em and Smile. That's one. right. Of and and Joel and Turner with Ingve. Oh, there you go. The Eat 'em and Smile is still the best one. That's that's great. Actually, I got another one. If I can throw one out there, if, if we can go in a time machine, I would love to see the Traveling Wilburys. Oh. <laughs> Chris, Chris Groen. Groen. Yeah. yeah. Jeff, like the Jeff, Jeff Lynn is involved. <laughs> that, that's a deal <laughs> breaker. Then, automatically. Turn, turn his mix down. Who gives a fuck? We got George. Uh, how about we turn his yeah, heartbeat Orbit. down <laughs> and turn Fine. it off? Give me, give me a fucking uh, traveling Wilburys, but instead of Roy Orbison dying, Jeff Lynn dies. Is that better? Okay, I can get on board with that. Je- okay. Jeff Lynn dies is the favorite phrase for this entire episode. And it sucks because Roy Orbison died, so now Jeff Lynn dies, and Roy Orbison is still alive. And I'm, we're gonna I, go through that. I would anymore. love that. Is it, is, uh, hey, hey, is, that's a compromise. It's what Bob Dylan and uh, Jeff Lynn it's are the Dylan, only two. It's it's Tom Petty. It's Harrison. But as far as Orbison. as far as who's still alive, it's just those two, right? It's it's uh, Lynn and Dylan, right? Yes. Yeah. Wow. I'm, like the two worst members. <laughs> I just well, mean, essentially, Petty was the most important member, right? Well, well George Harrison. Yeah, the, 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 Harrison. George Harrison was in this little band called the fucking Beatles. No, but I'm just saying, in, within the confi- within the context of the Wilburys, wasn't... He's like the lead uh, vocalist. Wasn't, it wasn't he... Not, not, no, they all of them. No, no, all of them were. But wasn't all- uh, Full Moon Fever essentially a Wilburys album, but it was a Petty album? So what difference does that make? It kind of well, it makes it Wilbur, sound like he's, he's he's like take, he wrote everything? like he's taking the lead on something. He was the fucking no, 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 Johnny no, no, no. Come Lately compared to all the other four, no, including but the, two, but the two Wilburys albums was all five of them taking leads and right. sharing leads. And that was the beauty of. Well, actually, the second record, Roy had already passed away, right? So I they only think have four that's correct. Yes. Yeah. But I would I I once again Tom Petty's and all those guys like we said like Huey Lewis like fucking. God, our Prince, like fuck! I wish all those guys were still alive so I could go see them in concert. Like you would know every song. Yeah. Like okay, Prince. Like I want Prince alive again. I want to see wow. yeah. 1980s era Prince. I want to see 1980s era Michael Jackson. Yeah. Like, both yeah, of them, I, I want. Back. Well, like, and like, here, come on, man. here's here would be my answer since we can resurrect dead people, and we mentioned him earlier in the show. I'd want to see in excess from their the height of their powers in the eighties. Great call. Uh, uh, Hutchins is one of the great front men of all time. Dude, uh, just, and, and 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 once again, I say this all the time: had Hutchins not died, they would be an arena level band to this. They'd day. be on U 2s level. I would. I, I agree. I don't know with if they'd you be U two with the stadium level, but they would be a fucking arena band for sure. You're right because Hutchins was a star. He would still be hot. He's sexy as fuck, and their fucking set list would be just oh yeah, boom, 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 boom. They've got so many hits. Oh yeah, and they that that fuck, that, that, was, that, was a, that was a great band. And great uh, band. The yeah. brothers, the brothers, always great in a band. Yeah, fucking a, fucking stupid. Uh, what do you, uh, what, Auto uh, is, ironic asphyxiation. Yeah. It should be banned. <laughs> guys, guys, guys and girls listen to the show, never auto-erotic as this seat. Yes, yourself. just yeah. simply masturbate like young Stephen Pierce. Like the rest of us. <laughs> Hold on, say it again, Chris. S- masturbate like young Stephen Pierce. Just close your <laughs> eyes, whack away, you're fine. You, you don't need any belts around your neck. <laughs> Oh my God. You don't need to. Ha- you don't need to hang yourself from the c- shower rod. Just sit there and masturbate. Do you That's think there you was fucking with. foul play? Who actually does that? David Carradine yeah. and Michael Hutchins. Yeah. Is anybody else doing this? Probably some random guy oh, yeah. over in Gary somewhere, but you know. Enjoy it. Well, some fucking yeah, enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. They're they're they're, the now, you yeah, they're, they're, they're they're choking <laughs> themselves in it on the regular. Listening to this show while they're. Oh my god, we're having a great conversation, but people are ready to fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like so, my wife specifically, she's gonna fucking kill me. Oh my gosh, is t- is it two twelve thirty there? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We know that Andy doesn't have a job to go to tomorrow. <laughs> Damn! Wow. 
Yeah, where well, that fits into cut, the end of the conversation. Cut, cut me but deep. You will. Just hold oh, on, kid. Okay. Well, thank you for your belief in me. Um, thank you to Corey for your Yardo questions. He also said thank you for being the recognized symbol of excellence in rock and roll podcasting and for continuously being the best part of my week. Thank you, Corey. Thanks, Congrats Corey. on 500 episodes, and here's to 500 more. Oh, don't do that to us. I'll be here. I'll I be hope waiting. so. When the when the when you a question is what podcast do you wish would reunite? I'm gonna say fucking Pot of Thunder. Well, Someday. Hopefully, hopefully you don't have let, to. Let me it. just say this for anybody else. Congratulations on 500 episodes in 10 years. That is a huge deal. Do you guys know this? There's literally a million, and this is not exaggeration, a million podcasts, and they fucking come and go so quickly because it's not easy to do a podcast and be good and have a fan base. So you guys having 10 years of this, 500 episodes, that is unbelievable. Congratulations to you guys. Thank Appreciate you, Appreciate it. And a large part of our longevity and success is, of course, attributed to you. So thank you for your support. Um, Always an honor. And thank you guys for giving me something to do on days off on the road. Every time <laughs> I have one, I'm going to call you guys. You're like my fucking side hustle. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been called worse. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> I will be called worse when I go up to bed and my wife is uh, ready to gouge my eyes. You're hanging out with those dead beats. You making any money yet, Chris L? <laughs> yeah, that was the, that was that was the uh, it, the impetus for the Patreon. Either monetize it or get the fuck out. Either make some time. money off this fucking thing or get it. Go back to Playboy. Well, that ain't happen. Although they are, they did release a line of butt plugs. So if they need anybody to describe those, uh, I'm, I'm available. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, man. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you. Episode 501. And Tooge, we will see you in Hobart in a couple weeks. Oh yeah. Looking yes, forward. We're gonna to come it. back to your house. We're gonna be there in person with a giant Give fucking me. ten pound pizza. And uh, I've got a couple tunes in mind that I think this the, like. the awesome. scene you're looking at in the upper right hand corner of your screen, you will be living in it. Uh, <laughs> this one right over here. What does that license plate say? Next twenty. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you about right. it when you get over here. <laughs> After you befoul my powder room. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will see you soon. Thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. We'll yeah, be back. we'll see you a couple weeks, man. Yeah. Looking forward Hi, to guys. it. All right. Thanks. Bye bye. French fried potatoes, garlic mashed potatoes, loaded baked potato, all the waffle fries on the right.